Hello and welcome to The Secret Show. It's episode number 241 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, why it's named that. It's a weekly lighthearted get together where Mark and I hang out with a live chat and uh, discuss what went on since last time we spoke in Flat Earth News. This time around, we're going to start off our show with a discussion of the Salton Sea demonstration. It's the follow-up to the Skeptic Society Salton Sea experiment, or I think they called it the curve test or something like that. Anyway, it was done earlier June 2018, not at dawn when the temperatures were low as originally proposed, but several hours later when the heat caused optical issues. IgG is the uh, skeptics group. They claim victory. They say they allegedly saw the curve. Anyway, we flat earthers know better. So joining us are Wendell Walton, Nathan Gonzalez, and Uber Josh. I think Josh is joining now. They are free members, F-R-E-E. -E. More on that during the show. Um, they're going to be in Southern California with many other flat earthers, plus two IgG members, tomorrow to show them they didn't see the curve and show them how a real experiment is done. So hello, Mark, and hello, Nathan, and uh, hello, chat. And uh, hello, Wendell. We're still waiting for Josh. Hi, how are you guys doing? Good. How's it going, Patricia? Very good, Nathan. Thank you for being here. And wow, Wendell, your icon is frightening me. I don't know if anybody can see that, but is that a scuba mask? No, looks it looks like, like a, a um, breathing uh, mask, like a painting. Mask. Oh, he just he just dropped off again. I think he's having a, a technical difficulties. Yeah, anyway. he's uh, actually driving out to Salton right now. Ah, he's okay. on his way out there. Well, today, very soon, is the setup for the uh, the pretest, so that yeah. when you do it tomorrow, it, it it'll it'll flow perfectly. Tell yeah. us, uh, since you're the only one here, Nathan, all the pressure's on you. <laughs> Tell us what's going to happen. Okay, <clears throat> so tonight. Um, we're going to be meeting up at the um, the location on the east shore of the lake, and we're going to rendezvous there and go over all the procedure and everything. Get and everyone who's going to be helping will be like assigned their positions and whatnot. And then we'll be doing a test run. So we'll have a couple balloons filled up, and uh, we have some super bright LEDs that we're going to put inside of them, and they're strobed. So like the white balloon with the big bright LED inside, which should be pretty easy to spot from the end to end. And then um, we'll also be doing a test run on the, the south shore. We're, we're going to observe the south shore from Capri Road, um, where we're doing the east observation as well. And from Capri Road down to the south shore is a little over 28 miles with 415 feet of curvature at a six foot observation height. Um, <clears throat> and so we'll be doing that as well. And then um, just making sure, you know, we got everything smooth, everybody assigned their positions, trying to make sure we're as prepared as humanly possible. So we don't not end up like Jim under prep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. And Uber Joss has joined us right now. And uh, where are you in all this? Are you headed out too? Or are you already on location, Josh? Oh, it looks like he stepped away. He has a uh, icon of a cat there, but a second. Uh, I don't there. think he stepped away. He's he froze too. Uh, oh well, he oh, stepped, yeah. uh, he drove away. <laughs> yeah. He might be so, having the, the same problem as Wendell has. The only one who's getting a good clear signal is you, Nathan, because you're you're like in a house. You're not moving anywhere. Yeah, yeah and, I'm hanging out in my house. And the Salton Sea and all the areas leading up to the Salton Sea, I yeah. found for me anyway. When I tried to do a live stream, it didn't work. I could I have Sprint, and I don't know what the deal is. I had really 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 poor signal. Mm -hmm. However. Uh, Jaron, who is going to be, uh, last time anyway, worked with Rob Skiba. Rob Skiba had a fine signal and other yeah. people did. So this time Jaron's going to help you out too. What's yeah. happening with Jaron? Um, so he's going to, we'll be having a live feed from um, the east and west shore um, simultaneously. And we're going to pipe him through Jaron's channel and he'll broadcast for us. And then um, <clears throat> once we complete the, the east-west observation, we're going to go down to the South Shore and then we'll continue live streaming on the South Shore as well. So you're not replicating the uh, the boat experiment that they did? Lord, no. <laughs> that was so horrible. <laughs> but tell people about how, what a what a mess that was. Oh my gosh, my, my poor buddy Jason got sucked into going and uh, <clears throat> it was just super hot. The sun was beating down. And they were out there for like hours, you know, doing doing the actual experiment. 
they had it blow the boat up to get it first in, in the hot sun, yeah. right? Inflate. Yeah, yeah. There's a tiny little like emergency uh, boat that you can, you know, like put away on when you're escaping a sinking ship or something. <laughs> right. It's super tiny. And there was like three full grown guys on there. And uh, it, was, it was a very long uh, thing, you know, because they went three miles out with their target. They had a big board that was painted within like foot increments and um we sent them up to three miles out and they recorded them the whole time and uh then they brought them back in so we were all baking in the sun while we were waiting and it, it seemed like everyone was about to leave before he even got there like he jumped on shore and everybody took off well the boat had a tiny motor on it that made it go at the speed if i if i paddled with myself with a nail file i mean it was like right <laughs> yeah yeah so. but that didn't work out, neither did the test itself, but not because there's a curve, but we flat earthers believe uh, because the optics changed because it was so hot when they did this test. Um, yeah, you know, I actually um, got a chance to look at IG's footage of that experiment. Mm -hmm. And he said it was from when they were at the three miles out, but um, they were expecting for the three miles of curvature they're expecting for about like a foot and a half of the board to be covered. And when they showed me the footage, it looked like only not even the first one was totally covered. So, <clears throat> um, that was, that was what I saw. And it, and I find it funny that they're not sharing any of their, their footage or anything with us. Do you think that they feel it can easily be picked apart by somebody who knows what they're looking at? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, we've requested the footage at least, five or six times from them and they don't they won't even acknowledge our request for the footage in retrospect i mean you know how would we know we just went to observe right yeah. we probably should have done what you're doing then at the same time they were doing what they were doing but you guys to the rescue and you're calling this um a flat earth demonstration right as mm -hmm. opposed to an experiment i love yeah that. yeah demonstration or observation right right yeah. we're gonna <clears throat> it's all about you know, most people have to see to believe anything. So we want people to come and observe and, and demonstrate how flat, you know, water actually is. Because the, the point of the two experiments in the east-west and the, and the west-south observation is to show that there's no curvature on the X and the Y axis across the lake. So we're not only going one way, we're going the other way. And then in doing that, showing that the lake is completely flat and there's no curvature at all on it. <clears throat> So, to be completely uh, fair, flat earthers didn't do their own experiment due to the fact that it was an experiment that the I, IGG people wanted to do, mm -hmm. and they were going to do it whether or not we showed up. And I guess we believed them when they said they were going to do it at dawn when it would be cooler. And well, they didn't do it until much later when it was really incredibly hot. Right. So, hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, we were even though you know we weren't there to take part or and whatever i was lucky enough to be on that side and because i think if if nobody was over there it just would have been a total complete disaster and they would have been able to claim whatever they wanted to claim and well they already have that's the thing um yeah you know it was on that uh seti um mark mirrored a uh right talk show it's on his channel um and they anyway they are basically claiming that they saw the curve but wait, they 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 went on after the, no no no. The, the, uh, Mark before. will explain it better than I just did. Um, yeah, sorry about that. That particular interview by SETI, uh, they hadn't done the test yet. That what I did not know was yeah. that SETI interviewed Jim. Jim right, that's Jim kind of what I'm saying. Yeah, beforehand, and I they'll probably do a follow up, but they haven't done it yet. Well, when they do a follow up, I would imagine that Jim is going to take the the data that they got from the previous experiment and even if i believe two igg members are going to be there this time are I they going so. i wonder if they'll change their viewpoint and broadcast it and tell jim or just you know, kind of like nasa lost all the data <laughs> Yeah. All the you know, telemetry that, data. That's exactly what I was saying. They'd be like, oh, sorry, guys. We accidentally deleted everything. We don't have it. Yeah. You know? But that's, um, I mean, that's the whole point of uh, doing what we're doing as well is, um, you know, having everybody record everything and streaming everything so that everybody has access to that. 
Because it's so, so incredibly shady, I think, that IG is not showing us their footage at all, you know? And, and they're supposed to be like a scientific entity, you know, science all about um, peer review. And if we can't review anything that they collected, how, how can we even trust anything at all, which we can't trust anything from them. But it has to show you the, the amount of, um, of deceit, you know, that they're willing to, to be a part of to continue the lie of the globe, you know? Yeah. And I was saying IgG, sorry, it's IIG. Yeah. Uh, independent investigations group, but yeah. Correct, yeah. Um, it really doesn't matter what we call them, does it, in the, the yeah. end of things? Actors, I guess. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but you guys have an acronym for your group, F-R-E-E. -E. So tell us what that's about. Um, <clears throat> so when I was thinking about this whole uh, experiment, and, you know, they have IIG, which, which um, it's not too catchy you know we can hardly remember it as it is <laughs> yeah. and i wanted to to make a, a name for our group so that we can you know people could say oh did you hear about that te that test that you know that such and such group did and so I, I wanted it to be something that um was like relatable to everybody and and so i just started thinking and then um the word free kind of popped into my mind and i started picking it apart, trying to figure out how I could relate what we're doing to that acronym. Because for me, um, Flat Earth is really, um, when it comes down to it in the end, it's about freedom, you know, freedom to be a part of this earth and and, and live how, how we should be living, you know, living naturally and with no borders and, you know, um, and freedom from lies. I mean, yeah, freedom. Yeah, freedom from the lies. Freedom from from the poisons that they dump in our sky, and you know, and, and the poison in our water. That's what that is. Goal that we're moving towards is is like real, tangible change in the world. You know, and change for the good. And and freedom is just uh, that's what we need to have. We don't have that right now. You know, we're not free in this, in this world, especially in America. In the we have the world, illusion of freedom, the illusion of freedom. Yeah. Most people that you'd stop on the street that live in America or Canada or, you know, any Western place, if you ask them if they're free, they'll say, yeah, sure am. Mm -hmm. You know, go America, you know, yeah. or whatever. Yay, Canada. Um, there, we have a level of freedom, of course, but um, there's this secret impingement upon our freedom, and that's the thing that, that we all know about. Right. Um, well, I don't want to leave Uber Josh out of it. I saw his camera flash on for a moment, and then it flashed off, and I don't know if that's a signal issue, or he was just letting you speak, Nathan. So, oh, I saw him oh, on mute. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Hey, no, how are uh, you? I'm driving right now, so I figured it'd be easier if I just had my camera off. Otherwise, you'd just be seeing like, my arm is moving in front of my phone. All right. Well, you heard all the things that we were talking about. I'm sure you have something to add, maybe a little bit uh, more detail about the test. I know there's a tower involved and a thing you guys call the stick, just so that people who aren't going to be at the Salton Sea tomorrow to watch this tomorrow evening around 10, or not even evening, tomorrow night around 10, can get an idea of what's going to happen. Yeah. I as far as the tower, are you talking about the tower that Nathan was talking about as far as the, the one next to the helipad? Yes, exactly. I mean, that's... No, no, okay. no she's talking oh, about no. the, the, the stick that we're building for the observation side. Yes. Not the, not the uh, thermal tower, Josh. The wood, the wood. Uh, okay. it's well, like you're the, using the, the thermal, ruler. the thermal tower is a built-in observation measuring tool, yeah. pretty much. So yeah. that's one thing. It's there and you know the height of it so you can gauge things based on it. But right. then there's a thing called the stick. So take it from there, Uber Josh. Dude, you're asking the wrong person on that one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, Wendell, uh, we, uh, I think Wendell's probably just out of service. Yeah, he's out. Um, I mean, I could, I could tell you about it. <clears throat> um, basically, uh, pretty much Wendell is the man, and he's like, I don't know what we would be doing without him. He's incredibly talented, and um, he's been, he's been, uh, what did he, he did like set construction, and he did um, wow. some sort of construction for AT and T. I, for, I forget what his position for AT and T was, but 
he's basically been building things his whole life. So when we started talking about the experiment, um, there was a guy named Sly, uh, Sly Spokane. Sly Sparkane. Yeah. That, yeah. That, noted that, flat that. earth debunker. <laughs> yeah. Noted globe shill. Mm. Um, <laughs> noted beep, 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 beep. <laughs> yeah yeah oh man I, uh, I, he came on my video and tried to troll me but anyways so Wendell was talking to him and Sly was saying oh if I was doing it I would be I would build this big giant thing like a big ruler and this and that and then you could like you know really see it <clears throat> and so when we started planning it Wendell immediately was like let's let's do that and I thought it was a great idea because what we're going to do is <clears throat> the tower, it's, it's about like 35 feet tall, I believe. And um, it's like, it kind of looks like a ladder, but we're going to construct it in, thir in eight foot sections. And then the sections will be divided um, in foot increments. So it'll basically be like a big giant ruler. And we're going to have, um, <clears throat> we're going to have uh, like glow sticks. Uh, every five feet, I believe, so that you can see, you know, how tall the thing is at night. And then what we'll do is we're going to do a time lapse from the transition between nighttime throughout the early morning and later on in the afternoon so that people could see the effects of the sunrise and the sun beating down on the water and basically be like that uh, pig, pig bay uh, footage, but We'll have like a, a really skunk nice skunk bay. Sorry, skunk bay, not pig bay. <laughs> skunk skunk bay. pig, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. One of those stinky, dirty animals. Um, yeah, so basically, be like that, but we'll have like a metric ruler that will literally just show people how the whole thing is going to disappear. You know, from the sunrise into like the afternoon, and you just it'll it'll be like how we watched it when we were there. You know, the mountains and everything disappearing, but we'll have it on the time lapse so it'll be like a super quick video that you can just watch the whole thing disappear and that'll be really cool a good thing about this it's a waxing gibbous moon so the moon is at, at about 100 percent if you yeah. have the visibility there mm -hmm. um in southern california so that will help give you ability to look around a lot and right. you're doing it to test it around 10 as opposed to 7 a.m what's the temperature going to be approximately at uh, at 10 p.m um, <clears throat> you know, I haven't actually checked, <laughs> but, um, I'm going to we look there. right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you can look right now, uh, we were there this last Friday, um, scoping out and, um, scouting for the North and South locations. And it was at 10 o'clock, it was still kind of warm, but towards, you know, midnight, one o'clock, it was beautiful. It was like, there was a light, a very light breeze. It was nice and cool wasn't warm at all it was actually really peaceful and beautiful on the lake and everything and the moon was I mean, what was that like? so it was like at, um almost half, or a little bit past half moon so it was pretty bright um but yeah i believe the full moon is tomorrow tonight no t you said it's waxing yeah. so yeah tomorrow's the full moon so it'll just be we're gonna have that beautiful blue light on us and be nice maybe a little cool. bit of cooling from the moon who knows right oh for sure absolutely <laughs> no it really does help um <clears throat> and we, we also you know a few little side things that we're going to be doing is uh using the laser thermometers to do the moonlight test we're going to measure the water the water temperature air temperature ground temperature um humidity um, <clears throat> altitude we're we're collecting all kinds of signs like the data, you know, that raw data that we need. And um, so, yeah, it's going to be, I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be beautiful. I'm just, I think it's going to be perfect. That's that's what I'm hoping. I'm putting that's that out. That's the attitude. The I'm putting that out in the universe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right now it's over 100 degrees, um, but where you are, it's about uh, 3.48 p.m. Tomorrow the um, low is going to be 75 and the high is going to be 97. So nice. somewhere in the middle is going to be the temperature at 10 p.m. Yeah. Definitely less than 100 plus degrees like it was when we were oh, there. Oh, um, just to mention, um, we, we are probably going to start streaming live around like at 10 o'clock tomorrow tomorrow yeah but the experiment won't actually we won't be actually doing it till like around midnight because we okay, want to give the, the moonlight enough time to um cool everything down work its magic yeah um <laughs> 
So it's going to be on uh, the Jaronism channel? Yes, Jaron, Jaron will be streaming for us. And we'll have uh, both, both feeds going through there. And, oh, well, there's, uh, uh, there's, there's Uber, Josh. Come on in and just tell us whatever it is you want to add to the conversation. I don't want to keep you. And, you know, I know the signal that you've got isn't the best. And you're driving, if you're there, Josh. All we see yeah. is an icon of a sleeping cat, which I'm okay with, actually. <laughs> there you go. Hey, no, Josh. I'm still here. Uh, I just got a phone call right now, so it kicked me off the call. Oh, cool. Well, um, what are you hoping to see? What are you, you know, what are, what's your take on everything? Josh? I am whatever I can across that whole lake because... When we were there last time, that okay. So that 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 mountain or that hill that Mark kept talking about that was on the south end of the lake, we can see that, dude. Like seriously, I mean, I just it just feels like we missed something last time we were there because it was almost like I don't want to say that we were unprepared because we weren't supposed to be prepared. Yeah, that says it all, actually. There has been some criticism within aspects of the Flat Earth community that, you know, we didn't do a better experiment. And I want to say, well, we weren't doing an experiment. We went to observe, uh, whatever, you know, best laid plans and all of that. Probably we should have, but we didn't think of it. So, you know, enter uh, the FREE group. So you're going to make it right. But you, but you know what? At least with us going out there, we were able to be a part of it and see the different claims that, those guys kept making like uh one of the claims that really rubbed me the wrong way was the one that jim kept making about that stupid train the one that was behind the observation side yeah what, what was it that yeah. he said i remember vaguely yeah he said that uh from across the lake you could see that train and that it looked like it was right on the water uh but it was actually 40 feet elevated from the water and that's not right actually that's not correct um i think his elevation's off for one for two he kept saying how you won't see whatever's under that train and i beg to differ i think we will at different times of the day um and then there was another claim because he actually okay so the train he brought up like two or three different times uh, every time it passed by, he would make a point and be like, "Oh, there's the train." And every time I wanted, every time I heard that, I just wanted to kick him in the nuts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Come on, that's not part of FREE's uh, method of operation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I totally know what you mean. When he was saying you could come out here any time any portion of the year day or night and get the same results that we got here today that's not true and that, yeah, show, that exactly right there shows how much he doesn't know right because every, just one day just going out there one day with a time-lapse camera and you're gonna have what 15 different freaking conditions going across your point of view of what you're looking at in the camera i have some good news so spencer Ross and Carrie and maybe Willow from the IIG are coming. So three people. I just got I just got confirmation. So that's one, two, three, three people from IIG and Spencer's sort of girlfriend. Like. Tell everyone who you are because your camera's off. Oh, oh wait. Here. Oh no, she's okay, with hi. she's with Josh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I know. I just they're, they're driving. They're driving up together. Yes, I know. I just wanted everybody to know your name because not everybody knows you. And I am Sydney. Hello, Sydney, like Australia. And Sydney, when you were there, you were with your cell phone proving we're on a flat Earth before they even did the experiment. Pretty much. I mean. Well, what happened is that um, I had my P nine hundred down there, but. I wasn't able to get the altitudes across the water, and um, Jaron and Rob Giba mm -hmm. um, really, really helped me out on their live show. So that was awesome. They were getting me the altitudes and stuff, and we were capturing flat Earth. 
while they were claiming a globe win. So I thought that was really interesting. And I did get a little interview with National Geographic on it, but I kind of think that they're going to mess with it because, like, um, I told Josh in an interview he did with me after the National Geographic lady just flat out lied. Oh, left here. She just flat out lied to me on camera, I think, because I had gone around that morning and I'd been asking all the Globers, had they ever seen a shooting star go straight up from the horizon? And they were saying no. So I told her that on camera. I said, this is one of the things that made me start thinking first was what? And I said, you know, nobody's seen a shooting star go straight up from the horizon. And she goes, oh, well, I have plenty. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I go, oh, really? Because I just interviewed all the slow birthers here and not a single one of them ever has. So I don't know if that's going to make the cut. Probably not. But I just thought it was interesting. You know, like, it's going to be super biased. I am I uh, admire you for challenging the um I think she was like the host of the National Geographic uh, show. <laughs> I do. But she I would was, Yeah, I know how she was yeah, for she, sure. <laughs> but that's okay, pretty cool. Yeah, cuz she was, that was really hard on me. Actually, the guy from um she was attacking me on the interview so much and I was kind of backing up defensively, you know. And I was trying really hard to get my words out cuz I'm I'm new at this and um and then the guy from the World News team. Yes. So I'm, they're going to send me their, their stuff as soon as they have it, and I'll put that out there. Um, he came up to me afterwards. He was so sweet and kind, and he said, you know what? You just keep being you, and you just keep doing your thing. And I just thought that was so nice that one of the other news crews that wasn't biased, who allowed both sides to have their day, came up and, like, supported me after she practically attacked me on camera, you know? Nice. So, like, and the camera guys loved it. All the camera guys, even for National Geographic, it was the camera guy that got me the National Geographic interview. He was running around grinning, and they were saying they were having a great time, and it was just, like, major fun for them. So, so there were some fun moments. Yeah, there yeah. Were, the whole thing was great, aside from the, you know, heat stroke. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know, um, and you were using your cell phone and looking up, uh, you, looking up the height of the roadway across the lake, and you had your P nine hundred. You were just, you were killing it out um, there before the experiment yeah. began. Yeah, this actually started as my experiment, but what happened is I had asked them to overview it and do a peer review because I wanted it to be very scientific. Um, I think it's in this little shopping cart here. And I'm like, I want this to be like science, you know, I want them to respect it as science. And um, it just started exploding in my face. They took over, they changed the experiment to put it back on water. I wanted it on a dry lake bed and like everything. I did a huge interview with Josh and explained the whole thing, how it came about, um, which hopefully he'll put out soon. But basically it all started exploding and then by the end of it, I was freaking out and dying for flat earthers to show up because I was feeling very alone, um, very overwhelmed, and nothing I was saying was being considered anymore. And it was like, you know, all this news was showing up and everything, and I'm like freaking out. So I was just really desperate to have flat earthers. Actually, that was like the best thing that ever happened to me. But like, everybody showed up, and everybody was so supportive. And now it's crazy because everybody's being like, the work that everyone's doing is just amazing. You know, I think it's been awesome, and my hope is that all of this ends up in, like, an airplane going over the North Pole, and we're all in it. Well, that's, uh, it may be possible. We, we have no idea, but what you guys are doing is awesome. Thank you, Sydney. Thank you, Uber thank Josh. You. Thank you, Wendell, even if you weren't able to make it on. And, of course, Nathan Gonzalez, thank you very much for being on and telling us what's happening today for the test and tomorrow for the main event. Patricia, do you mind yeah. if I uh, say a little shout out to everyone real quick? Yes, please. And also let yeah. let people know who, an email address where they can message you if they need directions or, you know, because if they want to observe. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to say, like, it's been so incredible working with everybody, like, that that's coming yeah. out. Um, I mean, every single person has been contributing and, and pulling their weight and... I don't. I couldn't ask for like a better team of people to work for because just everyone's so loving and and it's just awesome. Everybody's awesome and everybody's doing doing their thing. And um, you know, Sydney, Josh, Snack, Caroline, Wendell, um, 
Angel, Aaron, Cryshock, Lucy, um, gosh, uh, Alex, Alex from Streetwear Addicts, he's coming up to help us. Uh, one of the guys that called in the Mark show, uh, not this last Strange World show, but the one before that, he's, he used to work for like SpaceX or something. He's coming down tomorrow um, from Lancaster. Um, we have quite a, quite a few people that are, that are going to be there, and, and uh, I'm just really, really happy that everyone's showing up for, for the big show, you know? Yeah. And, well, um, they're showing they, up for e each other yeah. and showing up to, to show the truth to everyone else. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's really our goal. That's that that's our focus at free. We want to show everybody the truth, you know, and not not hide anything. Um, so, <clears throat> if anybody needs directions um, or if they have any questions, they can email us at um, flatrealityearthexplorers at gmail dot com, or um, you can um, I'll put my number out on on the show if you guys want to call. Um, get a hold of me personally. It's 909-638-5767. And uh, if I can answer and help anybody with directions or anything, I'm more than happy to do that. And um, yeah, we're just really excited. We're super, super happy. It's, I got to I gotta pack up all my stuff and I'm, I'm bringing my kids, my three oldest kids with me. Um, uh, they're, they won't, we're, uh, yeah, they're going to be with me. So it's, <laughs> it's great gonna, for them it's to gonna see It's going to be it. like a fa family thing. Yeah, it's great um, for them to see this and to yeah. see that their dad is doing something to, that matters in the world, you know? Yeah. All right. Thank so, you very much, Nathan. Yeah, thank you so much for having us on, Patricia. Mark, thank you so much for promoting everything. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, you guys are doing a, a great job. Thanks to you and everybody. Thanks to Josh and Sydney out there in the car and to whoever else shows up. And by the <laughs> way, again, show up even if you just want to have fun with some flat earthers. Turn it into like a mini meetup. Bring some snacks. Yeah, yeah, we're in, yeah, Globers, Flat Earthers. We're we're gonna be hanging out. Um, you know, during the day we have a bunch of free times. So we'll probably swim in. We got an Airbnb with a pool, and it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be cool. Right All right, on. Nathan. Thank you. All right, that is bye -bye, uh, guys. Nathan Gonzalez, and it's Bipolar Flat Earth, the name of his channel. We've got uh, Josh Walker from uh, Uber Flat Earth. I don't know Sydney's channel. I know I do, but I can't recall it right off the top of my head. And uh, Wendell as well. I'll put it in the description box when it pops into my head. But okay. both of you, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And tell uh, Wendell we wish we could have had him on more. But okay. good luck out there. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye, guys. Well, that was very cool or or hot i should say <laughs> they are headed into hot territory oh for some reason we lo just lost mark Sargent. i guess he'll be back in a second he's got the link he'll show back up that was weird um boy we had a bunch of weird technical difficulties i think that happens when you have so many people on and there's a phone and there's you know and all of that anyway so you've got the information if you're going to be in southern california so that you're going to be able to um Go there yourself. Let me very quickly do some little housekeeping because if Mark was unable, is in a, Mark be, might be unable to get back on. Let me check. Let me do do a little thing in which you're going to see me doing stuff <laughs> while with the camera on. Sending a link again to Mark. If he just disappeared. Hopefully he will join back. We will wait. And as we wait, we're going to go into the live chat and say hello to everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, what do we have here? Hi to Test Vision and Zulu One and Ute and Glenn Parent and Bill Keith. And, oh, maybe Nathan Oakley can uh, help me with this. Uh, Nathan, I think I accidentally ejected Mark. And maybe somebody else knows how to do this on a Hangout. I accidentally ejected Mark when I was ejecting the other two guys. And once you do that, I don't think they're allowed to get back in. Is there a way around that? Or is that a fatal flaw within YouTube Google Hangouts? Hmm. Looks like it might be a fatal flaw, and this will be the end of our show. <laughs> don't even know why. Uh, Nathan... Let me know what you uh, what you know, uh, or anyone who knows a lot about Google Hangouts. If somebody's been ejected, 
and you want to let them back in again, how do you let them back in? You'd have to start another hangout. But I would hate to do that. I could do it. Um, yep, everyone's saying I need to do a new hangout. All right, I'm doing a new hangout. Sorry, guys. It'll be Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, show 241B in a couple minutes. Goodbye. See you soon. Hey, we're back. It's episode number 241B of The Secret Show on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Hey, Mark. <laughs> I snuck out of the hospital when the nurses took a smoke break. Is that what happened? Mm. 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 Uh, no, I accidentally ejected you from the uh, the hangout when I was ejecting. Uh, what did I Nathan. ever do to you? <laughs> Nothing. The, my mouse was just in between you and his picture. And once you eject somebody out of Whatever. a hangout, uh, what happens is they, they can't enter back in again. I thought so, but that was, yeah, you know, one of those things. Freudian slip. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I'm like, yeah, Mark, Mark, out of here. <laughs> I don't need him. <laughs> Clink. Exactly. Well, um, let's talk Flat Earth Army because people who are just joining us who didn't know we, this is the second part of a two-part show, part A and part B. Right. Um, and like I said, there was an issue, so we had to have a secondary hangout. But why are they wearing those weird clothes? Um what would you attribute it to? Uh, Laundry day? <laughs> several things. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, no, one would be that uh, the Flat Earth Army just keeps growing stronger and stronger. Second, it's a slight dig at Space Force because we are Flat Earth Force. Flat Earth Force. <laughs> Flat Earth Force. <laughs> Do we Enroll have a? Oh, yeah, we have a special like sign too. Yeah. Enroll today. It's yeah, not like seriously. a salute. It's like a. Yeah, it's like a salute up here, only down here. Way down, though, not on your neck, because then they say it's a Masonic cut-your-neck-off thing. Yeah, whatever. You don't care, <laughs> because you know that's I not know, I it. don't. I don't care, because most... Remember, your average person in the street doesn't know that. Even even if they... Most people in the street don't know anything about the Masonics, because they keep things a secret, so whatever. Well, of course, they just think it's a place. Oh, yeah, you know, my it's, grandfather or my friend was a Mason. They don't know the higher-ups and all of that stuff. Brick building, no windows, a lot of robes. Mm -hmm. Bunch of drunk guys playing ping pong, basically. And sometimes screams from that upper chamber late at night. <laughs> or so we've heard. It's not an upper... Hey, it doesn't matter. I just made that up. No, no it's good. It's good. It's pretty you close. Like it, you like it? Yeah. Hey, I've got dog tags. Yeah, you have dog tags. That's really... Yeah. Oh, they're blank dog tags. Awesome. <laughs> so you're like the unknown soldier. Exactly. The Tomb yeah. of the Unknown Soldier is See, guarded every day. And it's, if you ask that soldier, he might say, we fought for the rights of freedom... We fought for the, and then there's the rest of it. I forgot, but it was some poem I had to learn in school. See, I was pretty proud that I got actually, you know, a camo shirt and hat to match. I like the hat. And I, I do too. And I'm going to get more of these, but in different colors. I like it a lot. I've already ordered them. They are on the way. They should be here tomorrow. But you, you've got a nice collared shirt and dog tags. And apparently- Well, my shirt is destroyed, if you can see. It's destroyed- Camo, because I'm out there doing things, and sometimes I get caught on brambles. <laughs> brambles. So you're <laughs> like an officer. Want to believe that? The rare officer in the field. Apparently, you're also a three-star general. Yeah. Which yeah. is interesting. You don't see a lot of three-star generals. That are women. Well, I don't know if there's any three-star. Well, there general. is now. There's a new general in town, and it's right. me. Right. Anyway, no, we no. just wore these to be. You know, we're we're the answer to um, Space Force, actually. Yeah, we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're the Flat Earth Army. We were representing the Flat Earth Army. Flat Earth Army. And no, I'm not encouraging people to necessarily go out and, and wear camo and stuff because camo sometimes scares people. Sometimes. Well, for me being vegan, a lot of people think camo means I'm a hunter. Oh yeah. So I don't really wear camo. I have this jacket because it's just trendy or fashionable or something. But um, you know, I don't usually wear. Go around wearing camo. Being uh, a survivalist from time to time, I have a lot of tactical gear, but it's almost exclusively black. Yeah. So. Well, there's different camo for different color places. This would be in more of a foresty area, and then you've yeah. got the desert sort yeah, of this, desert this would storm be European, camo. Yeah, this would be European camo. There's desert camo, which is a lot of tan, a lot of khaki. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then there's winter camo. 
you know, a lot of white. just all white. Really? Well, no, it's not. No. It, well, okay. There's pure that that's not even camo. That's just freaking ski outfits uh, for them. But there's uh, Alpine troops, but there's also like white and l- shades of blue, which is weird. Yeah, I know. I used to have a joke with a friend, a girlfriend of mine, whenever there was this trend of camo, maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago, it was just everywhere. Lots of women, young women were wearing it. And my friend and I used to joke when we would see a woman wearing camo and being part of this mass trend with everyone wearing camo pants, camo shirts, for no reason. They weren't involved in outdoor stuff or military. They were just wearing it. We would say, hey, do you see that woman over there? And she would always say, nope, can't see a thing. As in, she's in camo, so she's blending in with the environment. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so there is another Flat Earth Army that we should mention uh, where people can purchase t-shirts, and there's a link to it in every one of your videos. Right, right. It's not camo gear. It's all black t-shirts with mm-hmm. uh, different... In fact, I, you know what? I've got... Yeah. Um, we know someone who makes t-shirts and um mark doesn't receive proceeds from the t-shirts but there's a link to them within the description box of every one of his videos and um they're join the flat earth army it's the flat earth army vibe what yeah you got so I've, I've got a couple uh right here as a matter of fact this is one of the ones i wore down in arcadia california for the la meetup very cool yep okay. yep yeah, yeah. again you can click on this in the description box of any video that i have out there all 1200 of them right now and then, of course, this one, which was made for me, but you can buy one if you feel so inclined. I don't necessarily recommend it because we are not all Mark Sargent. Okay, so a lot of people have, the you know, the Flat Earth critics, the Flat Earth uh, content cop people have uh, um, said that... Well, Ask me what that shirt was that shirt about? No, they'll say things like, oh, he has to go around with his big old ego wearing a shirt, I am Mark Sargent. No! Tell people where that came from. It's an inside joke. And yeah, Bobby it's an D's inside joke. If you guys too. don't know this, seriously, if you don't yeah. know this by now, how good of a flat earther are you? Uh, the first rule of flat club is that you do not talk about flat club. Right? And then the second rule of flat club is you do not talk about flat club. And that, it, again, is from 1999, the greatest year in movies, a movie with Brad Pitt and Edward Norton called Fight Club. And it was taken from a scene where a guy na- named Robert Paulson dies and they don't know his name and they eventually figure it out. And then he come, they come on and they say, you know, we are, I, his name was Robert Paulson and then we are all Robert Paulson and then I am Robert Paulson. And so that was what they kept chanting over and over. And somebody threw that in. It's like, I am Mark Sargent. Well, it's very go. hard to tell a YouTube content cop that long story. <laughs> they just think you've got a huge I know, ego. but it's, it's from Fight Club. Short version, it's from Fight Club. If you don't know Fight Club, well, then you're not much of a... You need to of, see uh, Fight Club and The Matrix. Not that they're in any way related, but they're just movies of that time that are just today still awesome. Both from 1999. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Best year in movies, you think, anyway. Best year in mo- it was. It's objectively. It's, ob- it's not even up for debate. It's objectively the greatest year in cinema ever. You've got to let me know what the worst year in cinema was. That's an interesting one you could compile. It's probably going to be from the 1970s. Mm, interesting. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, probably well, one Rob, of those boring years. Robbie D is here, and he's going to talk to us about what's coming out with the Flat Earth Conference. Hello. Thanks for being on. Thanks for having me on. How are you doing, Patricia? Hey, Mark. Hey, Robbie. Do we look all scary in our military clothing? <laughs> we scary. Know, flat Earth Army, they're coming. They're coming strong. Uh, <laughs> the world better watch out because the Flat Earth Army is coming. All right. So Edmonton, it's coming up. It's um, Mark shooting me. Mark was just shooting me. Now I'm really worried. <laughs> Mark is shooting with the uh, laser uh, temperature gauge gun. Which okay, won't hurt that, that's forgiven. Then. That's okay. <laughs> um, well, you've got. I see you've got your uh, computer open to the Edmonton uh, Flat Earth International Conference page. Tell us about Edmonton. Tell us about what's happening. Um, Give us dates and info. Yeah, it's great. I was just uh, talking with uh, Rob Skiba and Bob, and everyone's getting really excited. We're about 40 days away um, to the Flat Earth International Conference Canada. It's the first conference in Canada, and it will be in my home city, Edmonton, Alberta. And where it's at is at West Edmonton Mall. It's the largest mall in North America. So there's going to be a lot of media. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's there's tons of tourists that go through that mall. So I'm thinking that we should have some fun in the evenings, maybe flat smacking uh, some mall people. Uh, anyways, we'll we'll have a, we'll have a really good time. But yeah, we're 40 days away, and we just launched a new promotion um, with the hotel. So if you book your 
hotel right now, you get half price off your tickets. So all the information is at the website, fe2018.com. You can find information for Canada, also for Denver, which we can talk about just here in a little bit. But uh, every, everything is going awesome. We've got 40 days to go. And again, that's like tomorrow for me. So I'm in go mode. Me and my wife are working on everything. We were just checking everything out with the venue um, a few days ago, walking through uh, with them and just situating where things are going to be at. And it's going to be really exciting. The, the ballroom is, I'd say, almost better than Raleigh. Uh, it's absolutely really incredible, uh, you know, when you see it. And just the layout and being in the largest mall in North America, there's just a ton of ton to do, and uh, we're going to have a really good time. So, yeah, so if you go to fe2018.com, if you can't make it to Canada, make sure that you sign up for the live stream. The early bird live stream is ending at the end of this month, and then it will go to regular price. So sign up for it. It will give you the access to both days, all the sessions, and just like I did in Raleigh, uh, the live stream is going to be a flawless experience. I've got incredibly high speed line in there, so there shouldn't be any problems. Uh, it should be a really good experience, kind of, you know, better than uh, if you can't show up in person. But try your best to come out. It's going to be a lot of fun. We've got amazing people like Mark and Patricia and, and Rob and, and Jaron and Bob, you know, from Globusters. So there's a lot of really great people coming. Matt Long is going to be doing one of his first big uh, presentations. He's doing a lot more in Flat Earth right now. And uh, we'll have Emmanuel Lakonga, which I've done a lot of work with him in the past, the Controversy 7. So I know he wasn't able to make it uh, last year to Raleigh, but uh, he will definitely be here because he lives in the same city as me. And if people aren't aware of the story, Patricia had shared his link a while back uh, when he first got going. And we got we connected, and it was really cool to see another huge Flat Earth uh, YouTube channel that was in the same city. So it was really neat. And like I said, on Flat Earth, it's definitely a, a small, small world. Yeah, so it's uh, it's really exciting. I'm glad he's coming because I definitely want to meet him. And I was a little bit let down when he didn't come, but I understood his situation um, at the time to to Raleigh last year. Um, in the live chat, some voting is going on, Ravi, and this is totally off the point. But the voting is: Do people think you look better with or without the beard? And it looks like uh, you look better with the beard. But anyway, I am a fan of the beard. I think it looks great. Oh. What do you think, Mark? Sorry, I was muted. You were speechless. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was speechless. I was stunned by the beard. No, no, you, you look great. I don't yeah, know it what looks it good. Is. It's not it better is, or worse, but it, I just think it looks right when you came on camera. I'm like, that looks nice. So, well, it's funny because the only time I grow a beard is usually before I'm having a baby. So I did that with our daughter Sophia, and then after she was born, I shaved it. But this time around, I said to my wife, I said, you know what? I might just keep it for a bit, and we'll just see what happens. So, like I said, I mean, I like it both ways. But it's uh, thank you so much for all the people that that uh, like it with a beard or like me without a beard, but uh, we'll see what happens. My wife's kind of getting used to it, but uh, I don't mind it. It's not It's not too bad, so. Well, what matters most is if your wife likes it, actually, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, she doesn't hate it, put it that way. She doesn't hate it, so right, right. it's just a new look because most of my life I've gone clean shaven, but like I said, for whatever reason, I, I usually grow uh, facial hair when I'm about to have a baby and then usually I shave it when uh, the baby's born, but I didn't this time for my son. that uh, He just turned two months, um just a couple of days ago so we're we're doing well and uh my wife is really looking forward to uh, meeting everyone again in canada i mean she's been so amazing and so supportive and she works so hard behind the scenes putting a lot of this stuff you know together and helping me like i said i couldn't do this without her so i'm huge huge uh, major thanks to to my wife just uh, like i said and it's so amazing to have someone that that believes the way I do, you know, supports me. And, uh, you know, if anyone you know, wants to hear that story, go back to Patricia Steer. I think it's Flat Earth and Hot Potatoes, number 46. But I tell the whole story about how we met and, and just how interesting it was, um, you know, when all of a sudden I brought up Flat Earth to her because after a couple of weeks, I'm like, oh no, like my wife's going to think I'm crazy, you know, but she, she actually uh, believed it quicker than I did. So it was really cool. You're fortunate and you are a sign of the times. I think there will be a wave of people who, who meet and connect and one shares it with the other and the other person doesn't say, oh, you're nuts. The other person says, tell me more. And before you know it, you have a flat earth couple and, and, and in your case, two flat earth babies. So. Yeah, well, like I said, and I will have maybe one of the youngest flat earthers at the, uh, at the conference here in Canada. We'll have some cute flat earth, just a little shirt, a little nighty or something for um, you know, for our son, but, uh, I wanted to bring this up just before I forgot, but I, I got notified. I used to work in radio. I was in radio for seven years and I still, you know, pretty chummy chummy with a lot of people in radio. Um, I just found out that there was a GoFundMe for a big station here in the city and it's called flat earth conference tickets. 
And he says, we work at an Edmonton radio station. The show is called The Locker Room. We would like to go to the Flat Earth Conference in August. Our bosses don't want to pay for the tickets and they don't like the idea. So we're taking matters into our own hands. Please help us raise the money for tickets and a globe costume for our little person co-host. They have a little person. They have like, there's two main co-hosts and there's a little person, I guess. I guess it's not PC to say midget or, or all that sort of thing. But anyways, um, their plan is to come in. They're going to have the little person in a globe costume. So I'm not sure, you know, if Mark is going to be taking a picture of the globe or Patricia or whatever. But anyways, I think it's kind of funny. And so far, they have raised 250 out of the 1500 goal. And then when I was searching around, actually, on GoFundMe, there's actually quite a few. It's interesting. Someone do a search on GoFundMe and find out all of the, the different type of plans that people have. This one I find is very innocent. But I, I thought I would ask you guys what you thought of that. You know, should I bar them or say no if they get funded? Because I know that media is going to be there. Stations, radio stations are, are coming. But this one I thought was clever. And never clever. bar no, anyone because, unless no, no, they've threatened a person involved in the conference or one of the people watching. Because it's open to all. Because the truth, we have no need to hide the truth, right? Think yeah. of okay. think of all the people that came. Remember, all the media that showed up in Raleigh, none of them were on our side when they first showed up. And, and in fact, several snuck in, which we only found out about it recently. I mean, the New Yorker was there, did not say a freaking word, and he waited for, what, over six months before he released that article? And the rumors, turns out, if you didn't already hear, I'm sure you did, that Howard Stern's team was there. And they did shoot. They did have audio on this. And they just released that what a couple of weeks ago. And it's like I, it's, it's like wow. So what 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 harm can they do? A anyone that shows oh, yeah. up, they feel the infections, infectious nature of the flat Earth community. They for know sure. the optimism. It's tough to dig on us while they're look at what happened for to sure. Buzzfeed. Yeah, for sure. And I was just kidding. You know whether we should block them. I don't mind a little person in a globe costume running around. I mean Nathan Thompson runs around with a globe on his head with uh, you know sunglasses and everyone loves it so i think it'll be it'll be fun and i'm sure it will cause a lot of uh, people to be talking about it i just found it interesting that their creative way of saying you know oh we or we didn't want to pay for the tickets i mean they could have got media passes so they're doing this big thing about getting the community involved which is their way of of saying hey let's uh, what, let's get this go funded why didn't they ask for media passes because i believe that this is they want to get the community involved so they know for a fact they can oh. read out and say hey can we get media passes i would say yes but they're doing it outside the box to get the community like oh you know we don't want to pay for it but what do you think about us getting a little globe guy you know walking around the conference so everyone's <laughs> kind of rising up i mean it's they creative could, on their see, end and i think it's funny seriously they could he could go toe to toe i mean there's a perfect photo op for uh, nathan thompson yeah it's great it, it'll be it'll be great so i did, i was just kidding about you know blocking them oh, my, no, no, my no, personal okay. belief is if someone is going to be physically harmed or someone's coming you know threatening that's where you know i'm going to put my foot down but no i mean it's welcome to anybody and that's that's the whole thing it's like bring a friend you know people can come whether you believe in this or not all are welcome for sure just some, you know again don't forget some people don't like hobbits i mean outside of the shire they're not really <laughs> loved that much no what? My wife asked that. She's like, "Can we say Hobbit? I'm New Zealand. Would I get in trouble?" I'm like, "Well, you're 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 a Kiwi, so you probably won't get in trouble if you call me a Hobbit." My wife will get away with with saying a little Hobbit, you know, globe because she's she's a Kiwi. She's allowed to do that, but I don't know if I could call him a Hobbit and get away with it. Hello, hey, your wife's pretty. So she'll kind of get a pass. <laughs> oh wow, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, that's a thing. Being PC is one thing, but also respecting others is something we'd all like to do. It's sure. the only thing we really know that we can call that person when we meet them is whatever they tell us their name is and whatever they say they want to be called, right? Sure. Yeah. And I think it, I think that it says right in there, our little person. And I heard that that's probably the most PC to say it these days is little person. But it brings well, up an interesting point that in our society, everyone is protected, whether, you know, it's a homosexual or a little person or, but I find right now with the media, even churches, they are open assault on flat earthers, calling them idiots, morons. I mean, you are not allowed to say those type of things from the pulpit or from a newscast. I mean, these are respectable journalists and they're saying words like moron and idiot. So it raises a bigger question. How is it that, you know, they're getting away calling us insulting, you know, no one likes to be called names, but I just find it very interesting that flat earth really has become this, you can just say whatever you want. I think, 
in time, we have to kind of take steps in looking at that because people are truly affected. I mean, there's some people that are stronger than others, but I believe that those words are having ramifications for a lot of people that aren't coming out with this because they are scared to death. They don't want to be called idiots and morons and losers their whole life. And so I think there's something to be said when in society, almost anybody, any belief, you could be a UFO, you could be, you know, you could believe that uh, little green men run the world and you will not be assaulted and treated the way flat earthers are. So to me, it's something I'm looking into a little deeper and I'm going to do a few videos on it soon because I just think there's something to it that, uh, you know, in our society, people just shouldn't get away with calling people morons or idiots. And more than that, I think people are afraid of losing their position socially or job wise. And I think we've heard rumors anyway, it has happened to a few people. A few people have been um, asked to, to stand down, maybe not from their beliefs, but not be so vocal about it. Um, and we don't really know the whole story. We don't know every single person in flat earth and where they went, but some people might, you know, get off the flat earth train, even if they have it in their heart, because the people at the workplace were giving them pressure. Don't talk about that. We don't like your face out there. You're, you know, you're a president of a company or something like that. Yeah, for sure. Mark, were you wanting to say something? No, it was another little person joke. So uh, I'm not <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you were wanting to talk about that. But no, I'm not. No, I'm not no, I'm not going to do it. I'm just, I'm just saying there's something bigger going on in our society where any belief is protected, especially against negative words to that degree. Idiot, moron you know, loser, these type of things, don't be, you know, you were dropped on your head or don't reproduce. These things, you know, in any type of people group or belief system definitely would be looked at and taken, you know, through the legal system. And I think we've got to a point where, you know, all groups should be protected. And so I'm looking at it a lot more serious. And I'm not saying to wage war, you know, legal with everyone. Everyone has the right to express their opinions. But there's a difference between saying, I don't agree and calling someone a moron or an idiot. Mm -hmm. You know, so to me, I'm just looking at it like, wait a minute, in, in 2018, there's something going on when all of a sudden everyone gets protection over these type of terms being politically correct. My question is, what is PC when it comes to flat earthers? Hmm. hmm. Very good point. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to the video you're going to be doing on it or videos. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, so again, uh, that's just my thing, you know, thinking about it, doing videos, but, uh, you know, I'm excited getting ready for, you know, the first conference in Canada and obviously Denver, I mean, it's just, it's getting bigger and bigger as time goes on and we're planning more incredible things. Obviously most people know that Flat Earth Man is going to be there. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention about Canada, because I know this has been going around a lot, the whole roll and ready, because I think it's important to address this. Oh, yes. But, uh, you know, there was, there was I believe, uh, Daryl Marble uh, had hosted a big conversation, and IPS was part of it. And to tell you the truth, it was incredibly heated. It went on for a while. And near the end, it did get, you know, pretty much resolved. It was actually a really good show. I think Daryl's actually taken it down um, until the announcement. And that's kind of the announcement I want to make, is Rick Hummer, We'll be completely telling the whole story and we've got a special surprise plan. So for anyone that's kind of on the hook or what's going on or is he making Flat Earth look stupid? Absolutely not. It's absolutely an incredible project he's been working on. Many people in the Flat Earth have been working on this, but he is going to be giving the entire story and we've got a special surprise planned and hopefully even Neil deGrasse Tyson at some point will be able to see it because they are not friends at all. And through a character, just like Flat Earth Man, he was able to do something. Flat Earth Man in his music wouldn't have been as popular if it was Alex in his accent, but he put on a character and he was able to do something in the arts. It's the same thing with Rick Hummer, being able to do a character for a show, and he's planning the first Flat Earth movie that any Flat Earther has done. And it's high caliber, there's a lot of people involved. And I can just tell you, it's very exciting. So and at the conference, if you check out the live stream, he's gonna be telling the whole world the story and he's going to be showing some sneak uh, peeks and stuff, but everything will be resolved. And I'm sure that 80% of the people are going to love it. 20% will still hate it because there's always that 20%. But what I'm saying is a lot of people are going to actually love the project and are going to want to help if any, any way they can. And I know Rick is open to more people uh, assisting in the talents and the trade that they have. Well, that will be good. I can't wait to see what comes of all of that. I do know that on the um, Roland Ready channel, the preview of um, the film that he's making uh, is there. So people can go watch that and uh, they'll see a man who is a science lover, um, um, you know, looks like, uh, like a redneck and he uh, ends up meeting up a, a hero of his neil degrasse tyson so yeah. it's kind of left at that point and what's yeah, the one, you know, one thing i can say is he's not everyone thought oh he's making flat earthers look stupid but you have to understand that he's not a flat earther in that clip 
He's not right. a flat earther through the majority of it. So again, this is a journey. It's a story. It's almost like, has there ever been a project done of someone, how they come to flat earth? So that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to let Rick tell the whole story. But again, understand that in that clip with Neil deGrasse Tyson, he is not a flat earther. He is still a believer. He's asking questions. And Roland Reddy is a lot more intelligent than most people think. And the big thing is don't judge a book by its cover. And in Roland's case, this guy's intelligent. He starts piecing it all together. He meets people at the conferences. There's some really, really in incredible clips. And I think people are going to really love the project. So I'll let Rick tell the story in 40 days. All right. That'll be fun. So let's move on to Denver. You've kind of uh, alluded to it a little bit. Who are some of the speakers that you can mention and what can we expect? This is going, not that Edmonton um, is going to be a smaller one, really, I mean, or less important, but it's very important. They all are. Every meetup we do is important. Every video we make is important, but Denver is going to be massive. What are some of the things you've got planned, some of the speakers? Well, I mean, when it comes to when it comes to Denver, again, we're going to the second annual for United States, and we're at 140 days away. So it seems like a long time, but like you remember last year, how quickly Raleigh came around. I mean, it was just like, oh, it's eight months away. How am I going to wait? And then all of a sudden, boom, it's here, and it was it was so exciting. But we have everyone. We have Rob Skiba. We've got Patricia. We've got Jaron, Bob Nodell, Iru Landucci, David Weiss, Daryl Marble, myself. Zen Garcia, Mark Sargent. We've got a really awesome that I was able to um, announce at the Flat Earth UK convention was Dee Murphy, allegedly Dave. He's going to be coming. I was able to announce it. I was able to meet him uh, in person in Birmingham. And then at the end of their convention, I was able to announce officially that he was, he was coming. But we've got Matt Long. We've got Karen B. Um, so again, we've got a lot of people uh, that are going to be at Denver. Uh, we are looking at, um, you know, almost a four-day type event because, again, the conference is Thursday, Friday. But keep in mind that Wednesday we're doing a big billboard gathering and there's a lot of stuff happening on the Wednesday. So, you know, it, it's important for people to understand that it's not just the two days because we have Wednesday, uh, the billboard, you know, with the drones, and we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Media is going to be out for that. we got Thursday, Friday. And then Saturday, we've got a big after party, I believe, at a bar downtown Denver, which we're pretty much completely taking over. There's about 250, 300 people available for that. You know, Flat Earth Man, other people, you know, possibly ODD might be making an appearance. Uh, again, nothing's finalized, but again, there's a good possibility. So that's kind of the entertainment portion of it. Although Flat Earth Man and a couple other things, we might be doing some more acoustic entertainment or smaller things at the conference. But again, we'll also be doing the 2018 Flat Earth Video Awards, the Flatties. So that's another exciting thing as well. We'll be able to, to uh, you know, give out awards. I thought that was incredibly important as well because uh, there's a lot of people in this community that are doing a lot of amazing things. And I think it's important to be recognized. And it's been amazing, you know, with uh, you and Mark, you know, putting that together on YouTube the first year. And it just was such a, an incredible thing. So for me to be able to, you know, ha host that and have you guys basically present it all, to me, it's such an incredible thing for people that can't make it to the conference or they're doing certain things that maybe they don't feel they're recognized. There's a lot of people and we see it all the time. And I think it's one way to really recognize a lot of people out there that are doing extraordinary work. They just might not have, you know, bigger channels or they might not have, you know, the recognition that some other do. So this is a great opportunity to, to reach out in all sorts of different categories, right? Singing yes. and, you know, different things. So to me, that's a really important part of the, the community. Again, we've got amazing presentations. We're going to have Q&A panels. I know Mark is going to be doing a, a great session, but also a Q&A, which was hugely popular. That's one thing that I will say with a lot of the mainstream and a lot of the journalists that have talked to me, they were surprised, but also you know, encouraged in the fact that we opened the floor. Wow, these guys aren't hiding. They're not hiding anything. You know, so again, the Q&A's went over really well. So we're, I think, going to have about three Q&A's in total. Mark Sargent has his own, but there'll be the big Q&A that Patricia will will be moderating or hosting, um, you know, near the end of, of the conference. And uh, to me, it's just, like I said, it's exciting. For 2017, I was on an absolute high. I think for the, the week that I was there, um, I slept like maybe 18 hours the entire week. I mean, I pulled three all-nighters. And I just couldn't sleep. I even tried. I'm like, how do you sleep when you're making history? How do you sleep in the world? You know, I had to go out and, and socialize and just make sure that everything was right. So I want to make sure that everything is is great. I improve on things. I've listened to the community. One of the biggest things I want to make sure that everyone's clear on this as well is some of the criticism was, it, it was, oh, there's a lot of Christianity or because, you know, Robbie's Christian. 
wants to make the I can assure that's absolutely not the truth whatsoever. And understand that in a first year conference, you have one room. So it's hard to appease everyone. But I can tell you that in Denver, if there is something religious or Bible based, there will be an optional session to go to if you don't want to. So it will please everyone. So I want to make it clear because I know a lot of people that have reached out to me, you know, that's kind of the consensus with some people thinking that I want to make this all Christian. Just because I'm a Christian, I'm doing a job, I'm creating an event. This is not a Christian event, nor is it a biblical event. This is for the entire Flat Earth community. I want all views represented. My big thing is I just want to look at people that see the big picture. They're not putting out videos every other day, attacking and infighting. I want to see people that really understand the big picture and that we really can unify together because the one thing that we actually all have in common is that we all do not believe we're on a spinning ball flying through space. And I want to emphasize that. And as long as you are doing stuff and you can kind of see the big picture and you don't want to fight everyone, reach out to me. Some people say, oh, you know, Robbie never reached out to me or how come I wasn't invited? reach out to me, you know, drop me an email. Let's get talking. You know, I'm not opposed to bringing new people in. I'm going to be doing that every year, bring new faces in and everything. So that's important to me because I know a lot of people are saying, if you have an opportunity in an interview, really express to people that absolutely, I want to make sure that all views are represented. I know that um, uh, Martin Kenny had reached out to me and there was a lot of rumor going around that I thought his model, the cosmic aid was satanic and I would never allow it at any of my conferences. Well, after a two and a half hour conversation with me and Martin, I mean, it was it was wonderful. I said, absolutely. If you, you want to come down and you want to present your cosmic egg and everything, you're more than welcome. And after the conversation, he said, you know what? I'm glad that I spoke with you because I was listening to a lot of people and I was, you know, getting this opinion of you. So I think it's important that, you know, if uh, you want to reach out to me, you're doing extraordinary work, you're doing things in the community, and you don't feel your baby being recognized, you know, there's room not just for, you know, big presentations, there's going to be workshops in Denver. So maybe you want to teach a workshop. I know Dave Marsh is coming over and he's going to be doing a moon workshop. And what I find really good about workshops is you can get a lot more technical. The big, the bigger sessions are more for stuff that kind of appeases more people. But if you want to do a real solid, you know, integral thing on say Pac-Man, well, a workshop for me is a perfect opportunity. Um, you could have that opportunity. Anyone that's really interested in learning more about Pac-Man will go to that workshop. Same thing with Cosmic Egg and that sort of thing. So what I'm saying is you start off with workshops, but again, as you're doing more and more stuff in the community, I have no problem putting you on the stage. If you're a Muslim and you're doing incredible things with the Quran and there's there's a history and you have a great YouTube channel, one day you'll be on the stage. It's not just all Christians that are going to be on the stage. I want everyone to understand that. I am a Christian, yes. But understand there are a lot of Christians in Flat Earth, and they have to be properly represented as well. The Bible is a big component. Mark Sargent's Flat Earth Clues went right through it and had a whole chapter talking about the significance here. So religion, quote unquote, people don't like that name, but it does have a significance in this whole Flat Earth discussion and community. So it has to be properly represented. Now, I know Rob Skiba doesn't count because even though he's biblical, everyone loves Rob. You know, he doesn't offend anyone. People love Rob. But then other characters that maybe might be a little bit more preachy or something, if you know that there's a pastor, you know, up there doing a Flat Earth presentation, well, I'll make sure that there's another Thing with Iru Landucci that's you know going integral with space or with the deception saying is if, you, if the pastor's not your thing there'll be something else as an alternative it won't be religious one bit I think this is great I think that it's wonderful that you um, instead of just like some people who would organize something and then would get a little criticism they'd be angry but you didn't become angry you opened your heart and your mind to new ideas and concepts and then you know revamped a little bit for this uh the second big one in coming up in denver and also edmonton i mean i know you've learned from raleigh and or bringing that into edmonton too i really admire that i think it's great yeah well it's important to me because i i want to be transparent and genuine with everyone and let them know that you know if if you're suspicious call me up i'm easy to get in contact with you can ask anyone that knows me in flat earth they'll be like Robbie, you can talk to him anytime. You know, he like he prefers to talk more than type, you know. So anyone, you know, if you want to reach out and you're doing extraordinary work or you've just heard some certain rumors, why don't you talk to the source? I think it's important, especially when it comes to, you know, someone preventing you from coming and experiencing something. See, I'm not mad at the channels that basically call the, the conference a shill fest. I'm upset because the people are going to be deprived of something that could truly be beautiful for them. And they're going to miss out on it because they're going to be scared and they're going to live in paranoia. To me, that's the important thing here is it's not everyone has the right to express their opinion. They can say whatever they want, but it's all their people that are following their channel. They're like, yeah, I better stay away from that. That's a shill fest. I don't want to be included with shills. Anybody that 
went, went to the conference, again, you looked around, people were happy, they were pleasant. Even the journalists have said, you know, even when they were critiquing certain things, they said, the one thing I can't say, everyone was lovely. Everyone was so friendly, you know? So even if the world is looking at the community and they're seeing that representation at a conference going, these people are lovely, you know? And even that documentary, you know, behind the curve, again, hey, these are people. Let's treat them as such, you know? So to me, these are good things to address with the mainstream and the world and having the media there. We look at all the time, like we want this perfect report. That's another thing. It's like, oh, they, they, they did this, or oh, they brought in a NASA guy. Overall, we're not gonna get always the, the best media coverage. But I can tell you with the conference, there was good, there was bad, and there was in the middle. But I mean, the ABC Nightline, I mean, I was talking to Rob Skiba and he said out of the hour interview that he did, if he tried to pick better clips that they used, he couldn't. I mean, what does that tell you? That's amazing that out of an hour, he couldn't have picked better clips that ABC Nightline used for him. So to me, I think the, the, a lot of the journalists that I'm talking to, they're very bad. They're very intrigued because they're seeing such a diversity. They're seeing this thing grow exponentially. Again, I've done interviews in South Korea and Russia and Europe, and I've done them everywhere. And this thing is exploding everywhere. You know, this is not just a North America thing. And truly, the media, they're kind of caught off guard and they're like, what's going on? How can people believe this? So to me, it's great. Me, all media for me is, is good. And it's just one person at a time because a hundred people might laugh at it, but that one person goes, hmm, I want to type that in. I want to look into that a little bit more. It's all, it's all about one person at a time. And we're, we're definitely really reaching a lot more people year after year. And all of us got here one person at a time too. And we have to remember that. All of us saw something or heard something and looked into it. And uh, the, the laughter or the mocking, we pushed it aside for a brief moment while we did the research or even longer than a brief moment, several weeks or months. And then we got here and here we are now. Um, I heard some rumor on a, one of those content cop sort of channels that's you know called it a show fest, that uh, before you were entering, before you were allowed to enter the uh, the conference in Raleigh, you were forced to download Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent's apps. <laughs> like, really? No. no, not at all. There was no there was no prerequisite at all. Uh, people were even asking. Some people were asking where the the schedule was, and I said you could download the uh, conference app. The conference for the first year had a conference app, and I said the schedule is there. But no, there was absolutely no prerequisite. And I'd like to see the proof where the conference actually said, you know, before you can register, you have to download both those apps. There will be nothing in existence. A lot of times these accusations are no proofs required. People just like the channel that's saying it, and then they just believe yeah. what they're saying and don't go look for themselves. So yeah. now, will you have a, a, a conference app that doesn't have any creepy spyware on it, obviously, just like before, but will you have a conference app for uh, both of the conferences coming up? No, I decided this year not to do it. I mean, I did it the first year and it was good, but I just felt that Facebook and all the other stuff that's kind of going for community and, and talking was good enough. It really, to me, wasn't worth the expense that the, the app uh, to be created cost. I felt that the money could be used elsewhere uh, in improving and making things better for the conference. So no, there's no app, but you can check out fe2018.com on your cell phone. It will, you know, format to nice version, or you can go on, you know, your computer or a tablet. So I just, I went that direction because again, it was pretty much the app was pretty much the website. Yes. Drunk. Yeah. I, I thought that too, when I was there, that it, it, it has some cool things. It had its own little, like, you know, it had its own little um, comment section and you could post things. And, but to me, for the expense, I mean, I think it was $1,500 American just to um, to do that app for the entire time. So to me, I was just like, really, to post a couple of pictures and really people are used to posting on their own social medias. So it's hard for people to start moving to someone to somewhere else to start, you know, engaging. So I just felt, let's just use the social media that we're using, like YouTube and Facebook and do it that way. So yeah, but no, there won't be any apps. I just don't feel that the expense justifies, um, you know, the value from it. That that even is more of you learning as you go along and sure. what works, what doesn't work. And you've, yeah, I think this is great. This is, this is progress for Flat Earth, most definitely. Sure. All right, Robbie. Well, thank you for coming on and talking to us. I appreciate well, it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Have a great show, you guys. And uh, everyone, take care and uh, fe2018.com. Sign up for your live stream or get your tickets. It's going to be an amazing time for both. So take care. Blessings. Hi, Robbie. That is Robbie D of the channel Celebrate Truth. Now, I have my app, you know, the uh, infamous uh, Flat Earth Mother Hot Potatoes app that was uh, made for me without my request by a guy named Joe Real from a company called iMobilize. Um, right. and, and, and you yourself had one made for you. Um, I didn't really know there was a 
parent company called Metatron until the whole thing exploded on the internet with the whatever. Right. But people were saying that my app has tons of spyware on it and that's what it's all about. So I just deleted the app off my cell phone, okay? Just to prove a point. So as you can see here, is this able to be seen at all? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, so right here, I know it's gonna be hard to look. You can see that it, it shows it's not downloaded, right? And I could download it. Okay, and so this is the same phone. I'm not using a trick phone here. It's not downloaded. All right, I'm gonna show you what permissions it asks for. So I am now downloading it. It might take a little bit, but when it's downloaded, I'll, I'll hold it up and show you what permissions it asks for. People have said it asks to have permission of your phone, that it can use, uh, access your text messages. It can send things out in your name as if you wrote it to random people uh, in your, uh, social media, it can, it never lets the phone shut off. It uh, takes pictures of you. It, it wakes the phone up while you're asleep and monitors you and records you. Okay, so I've got it on my phone now. You can see where it says open and I will do that. And okay, so allow Flat Earth to access your location while you're using this app is the first thing that comes up. Now, Maybe that sounds suspicious to someone, but anybody who uses apps knows that's a pretty normal permission, okay? So I'm gonna hit allow because my location's right here. Then Flat Earth, the, the app would like to send you notifications. It says notifications may include alert, sounds, icon badges. These can be configured in the settings. So you can put don't allow or allow, it's up to you. You can put allow, then go back into your settings and make sure none of those things buzz or beep. I'm gonna put don't allow just to see what happens. Oh, look, I've still got the app. Let's make sure I still have the app. F-E-O-H-P shows. There's all my shows and look, there's oops, somebody's messaging me on Instagram. Um, there's the show we just did. I mean, that's us now and that's, so what I'm saying is the, the lies about the apps doing all of the spyware are untrue. Um, and it's also free. And I'm not even encouraging you to download it. Don't download it. I didn't get any money from it. It was, they made it for me for free and I just downloaded it for free. It's just something that some people like to have because they can watch the shows without going on YouTube. But I'm just letting you know that lies have been told. Lies have been spread. People don't look for proof. They just believe certain content comp channels. And I encourage you to do your own research. <sighs> All right, I've got that off my chest. Do we have anything else to talk about, Mark? <laughs> uh, I got a new clue coming out. Well, that's the most important thing of all. Tell everyone about this new clue. So as you know, clue 13, if you didn't already miss it. So the original clues one through 11 were done very, very quickly. And then clue 12 took a little while. That was called Realize. And then clue 13, which was just finished within the last month, was called The Lost Nail. And clue 14, which will be coming out a week from today, the same day we do our show, hopefully, is going to be called The Coat of Credibility. And it is about what I, I felt strongly about this for a while. And I did a thing on Bill Nye, the science guy, but I really wanted to isolate it this time, which was why do people believe in anything that somebody with a lab coat says? So if you're wearing a white lab coat, you immediately are labeled more intelligent and an authority on the subject. And I actually noticed that. It, what really kind of drove it home was when I was down at the meetup with you in Arcadia, California, and there was a man walking around with a lab coat. He was one of ours, and it was Dan the Waterman. And he was walking around with a lab coat and a clipboard, and people were listening to him. He looked official. He, he looked official. Well, that was just it. the fact that you even said that, that he looked official. How? How? Why? Why Why would he look? He sells freaking water, water supplies for a living why would he look more official just because he was in the lab coat and that's because of the conditioning we've had much like the globe and so that's what this clue is going to talk about it's not going to be very long it'll be probably less than 10 minutes but i'm trying to make them shorter if i can because it drives the the point home and people have limited attention spans but that's what's going to cover the the lab coat and the power of it and it's amazing you know with all the other uniforms you don't get that same thing but with the lab coat immediately more intelligence authority official we should listen to this guy whatever he says i'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt right away it's like glasses if you wear glasses you're looked at as being more intelligent 
Yeah. Yeah, you mix you mix glasses with the lab coat and you've got a deadly combination actually. Interesting. And you can put it on anyone you want. It doesn't matter if they're tall, short, fat, thin, woman. Even a little person. <laughs> uh, even a little person. And by the way, I, I have to address that real quick. Yes. I, I you know, because I'm a I'm a huge Peter Dinklage fan from Game of Thrones, and I have watched a bunch of interviews that he has done, and he is not shy about using the word dwarf. So, but I don't know what the difference is. I should probably look that up between someone with dwarfism and a midget or some other, I don't, I don't know. So, but he, he's not shy about saying it. So I think dwarf is still okay. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know. In fact, we all would hesitate before we gave a descriptor, but I would just call whoever that is that we end up meeting, whatever their name is. Leave it at that. A movie trivia for you. I thought it was very interesting that the movie, the late 80s Val Kilmer movie, Willow, was shot with a lot of little people. Just about every little person actor you could ever think of. And was Wizard of Oz was too. A Wizard of Oz. But when they went to Lord of the Rings, they only, they did it with special effects. So they, they only hired uh, normal height actors, but then they shrunk them down with special effects. To make That's it scary that they can do that right. because that means they can use that sort of special effect to fake out anything, including space. <laughs> mm, including space, yeah. I get a lot of people, I can imagine, a lot of people when they meet these actors in real life, it's like, oh, I thought you were so tiny. It's like, no, no, that was all CGI. Well, that happens anyway. I've heard that when you meet famous people, they are always uh, have much bigger heads than you thought. I don't know why, but I've heard that. I've met a few famous people. They seem to have normal size heads. I'm but, uh, well. I'm going to have to look at. Well, you know, I still get crap even to this day. You know, well, when we were down in Los Angeles, I had I at least ten people talk when they were talking to me, going, "Oh, I thought uh, you're taller than I thought you'd be." And I always get you're so much smaller than I thought you were. <laughs> yeah, and that is because what we're doing right here, you and I, when we are your camera, you're looking down at your camera, mm -hmm. and I'm looking up at my camera, and it and it's rare that you see that sort of disparity, you know. Mm -hmm. And even though I'm sitting on several things, and so it makes you makes it seem like you're up on some sort of throne, you well. know, looking down on me and like <laughs> joking. Yes, Patricia, anything you wish. <laughs> Peel you uh, a grape? Okay. But it's true. Also, if you put your hand close to the camera on YouTube, your hand looks massive. Try right. it. Show it. Show us. Well, yeah, but you got to remember, you can actually touch your camera. I can't even reach it. Oh, that's it. true. I Like, this is as close as I get, and I'm still probably seven inches away from my camera. So people's judgment of our size or our body part sizes, et cetera, on YouTube is nothing like when you meet us and all of us in real life. We're just regular yeah, I'm people. eight feet tall. It's weird. <laughs> it's no it's big deal, really. No I'm a little person good. compared to yeah. him. No, I am 6'2", <laughs> though. And it, and people, I'm yeah. Five, six, they, so. Yeah. And, uh, but, but it's not your height that throws people. It's that you're so freaking tiny. What, what are you right now? 105? 106? <sighs> a lady. Probably is, 108, actually. Oh, all of 108. Yeah, I'm 230. So. Really? Yeah. Does that surprise you? I don't really know men's weights, but I know women's weights, if that makes sense, so what that means. But I've seen you in real life, and you do, you're not big, like big as in need to lose weight. No, you're, you've seen Whatever that is, is you, what you should you be. You have seen me in a towel. and That's true. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, you. In fact, you at kindly. It was one of the a compliment I am absolutely going to take. Asked, I've been spending more time at a gym. That's true, because I've never. I, yeah. It's like, oh, I'll take that. Yeah. Were you flexing and holding in your she stomach just, at that she moment? Just, she just bought two tickets to the gun show. Yeah. I forgot about that. Oh uh, well. Anyway, yeah, let me go. go into the live chat. <laughs> <laughs> this is me trying to throw Patricia off character. It's funny. You just says Sergeant Buff AF. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nora, no one's flower says Mark just blushed. It's funny. Um, Brian Stavely says I'm actually five foot six, but still dot dot dot. Um, let's see. Spirit Flong Thorn says, "Is it Saint Camouflage Day? No, we're we're just representing the Flat Earth Army today. Flat Earth Force." <laughs> Brian Stavely says now he feels fat. Thank you. To, uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I but hey, but there's a difference though. I um while you're looking at that, I, I remember because I'm sort of a armchair survivalist. Uh, I can't let myself go too much because that would just be hypocritical. I mean, I wrote a manual for God's sakes. 
Well, whatever people's weight are, uh, that doesn't make as much difference to me as how kind they are, how loving they are, how honest oh, they are. Oh, personality. Uh, yeah. How it's funny like, they yeah, are. Let me, let me be perfectly clear here. Personality yeah. is almost everything. It really is. It really it is. It really is. I've seen some amazing looking people just get less and less attractive the more they talk. And I've seen people who would technically by societal standards not be attractive, but when you start talking to them, they melt your heart. You just oh. love Oh, I told you, but I, you know, I went on a, a blind date years ago, and I, I, I thought, didn't remember oh. this story. Yeah, and I didn't think it was going to go well at all. Saw her in the lobby; I was going to bail, totally going <laughs> to bail. And and I ended up by the end of the evening, she absolutely had my heart. She did. It was like, yeah, I want to spend more time. She shut me down. Like, good for her. In in hindsight, it's like you know what? I deserved it. <sighs> Interesting, very interesting. Ridgeview is here. Hello, Ridgeview. Um, we've got Arwin and who is Tesla? Carl Stenbeck, hello. Um, I'm not going to say hello to people who I've already just mentioned. Plasso Plateaus. Um, Zane, busting some rhymes in the chat. Um, <laughs> really? Bust a rhyme? Really? Yeah, yeah. Hello to Stephen Chess and Stephen Atomic. Um, hey, you and Explosed. <laughs> who says cosplay? <laughs> Cosplay. Like, I don't know. This is not cosplay. Not unless I suppose just, when you're when you're like a kid, sure. Yeah. Play, we just start uh, representing the Flat Earth Army. We did it for fun. Actually, you play cowboys and Native Americans. Yeah. And you also you play army. They used to do that, like in the like in the fifties and sixties. They used to. You know, My brother had those little green army men. I think everybody did way back everybody when. Yeah, those green army men. And they were just everywhere, all over the house. In just, they were, my brother know. even flushed them down the toilet. That's just pretty much. Whoever like, invented though that those particular designs probably died a happy man. He's like, I yeah, even saw videos everywhere. on YouTube of people melting the army men in the microwave. So. Yeah, microwaves were used for nefarious <laughs> purposes. Yes, science ovens. Science. Um, hello to uh, Five Arts Liberalis and the Plain Truth and Greg T. And Glenn Parent, everyone's t t putting their weight and height in here. <laughs> really? Uh, why not? Earth, we, well, we just told ours, so. Earth if, calmed. If, if somebody throws in a body mass index, I'm going to scream. Oh, yeah. I have a scale that says the BMI, your BMI. Really? But, yeah, it's a special scale that. It, okay, one, why do you need it? You have, like, nothing on you. But I like to, I like, I don't know, I like to look, I, I like to monitor my weight. It also gives you your heart rate and um, your, your scale um, does all your this? bone mass. Yeah. What sort of scale is this? This is a government issued CIA scale. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of magical scale tells all these things? Um, it's also on my phone, so I can. Does it give you like a cat news. scan from the feet up? <laughs> no, it does tell you your temperature. It also tells you the weather outside. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? Are you making this up? No, I'm seriously not. I'm trying to find it. The app on my phone. Obviously, I don't use it. That wait, much. you've got an wait, you've got an app that it has an you? app on your phone that goes that hooks the to the scale, scale. Has an app. Yes, it does. This is modern um, time, which maybe. is kind of bad because I think it's part of the quote internet of things where they actually kind of are watching us, not literally like watching. Oh, well, yeah, that data is going everywhere. Right, Absolutely. exactly. So um, I can't find the name right now. It'll and, and, and somebody at some work terminal saying she needs 50 cc's of sandwich stat. <laughs> no, I'm not underweight. Healthmate. It's Healthmate. Two words, health mate. That's the brand of the scale. But um, it, it tells everything. Um, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I just find it interesting. And occasionally I weigh myself. So um, hello to Roxanne Glenn. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be interviewing Roxanne Glenn soon. Oh, right. They just did that meetup out in, uh, yes. well, it wasn't a meetup as much as it was act street activism. Street activism. Um, and check out Roxanne Glenn's channel. It's G-L-E-N. mass. It looked mm -hmm. like a great time. Oh, my gosh. And she was wearing camo in one of those. Uh, That's Oh, yeah. That was the other. The, yeah, we noticed that. It's like, how yeah. funny. Buddy. Um, Sleeping Warriors got an interesting video. He took the GCSE higher paper. Now, to Americans, that would be like, huh? But go watch Sleeping Warriors channel. He took a, uh, a high level college paper and he, he passed. So nice. Cool. Um, what else? James Neal is here. Um, I'm kind of scrolling up here and people I already mentioned, you know, I already mentioned you. FPV Angel and Chris Topher. Um, interesting. Chris Topher says the social psychologist Stanley Milgram did a famous research study called Obedience to Authority Study. It explains um, kowtowing to lab coats and to scientism. Makes sense because yeah. when a person has a uniform on, even if I went in my car wearing this, seriously, yeah. yeah, 
a person looking at me would say that woman's in the military. I I actually opened the clue with uh, I know he didn't invent it, but he's most known for it, and that is Shakespeare. Clothes maketh the man, and it's it's about it's about first impressions, which is what you're wearing. Uh, it tends to make an impact, and yeah, the uniform is a big deal. Uh, and think about this: how many times? Here's another thing: how many times have you yourself actually run into somebody that's wearing a freaking white lab coat outside of a hospital in a grocery store? I've seen it a lot. If you go to a grocery store that's near a hospital. Okay, okay. Well, you know no, okay. Take, 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 take that over the side. Okay, grocery okay. stores next to hospitals don't count. When no, but I mean, if to. I'm in the grocery store and I see somebody in a white lab coat, I think that's a scientist, that's, right. a, that's a doctor, that's somebody who's smart, that's somebody who knows what they're doing. What I'm getting is most of the time, again, it's the conditioning. This is media for you. Most of the time, you see the people in white lab coat in on a screen somewhere in television, in movies, in some, you know, some sort of corporate model setting on commercials. I, it happens in commercials all the time where the little print on the screen is like, oh yeah, this person isn't really a doctor. He's just portraying one. And I'm that's not a what doctor, but I play one on TV. Exactly. Like, I've <laughs> never, I don't think I've ever run into, even when I was in university, I don't think I ran into somebody that actually was wearing the freaking lab coat. Lots of doctors don't wear those white lab coats. Right. So, yeah. but it's in our mind. Because it's in our mind. It's absolutely and in our some mind. Some do. Some do. Fire, fireman outfit, policeman's outfit, mm -hmm. lab coat. Also, oh. firemen in general, women, there's a thing because of the media, television shows like Sex in the City and all of that, where the that firemen are really awesome and handsome looking. Oh, yeah. I'm using that, some of those pictures. It's a thing. Yeah. But I've met firemen who were, they looked like Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyone, you, know what, you, you, know? I, you know what? I'm blaming women for that one. You know what that is, don't you? And I've run into women that Fantasy? actually have- Absolute so fantasy. Cosmo magazine? I, I know that's it's beneath you, but a lot of women out there have that fireman fan because it's that whole rescue thing. It's it's too easy. It's like house is burning. You're the, the woman's the only one in the house. Fireman comes in there, breaks down the door, carries her out, and then gives her mouth to mouth. And then, oh, you know, Mr. Fireman, save me! Like exactly. That. The clothes <laughs> come off, and apparently the neighborhood isn't watching or filming it through their windows. And but that's that's and where then it backdraft happens, and everybody dies. <laughs> yes, and then backdraft happens, and that. It, but but what I'm saying is is that they they get that. That's that's where the calendar started because women have that fantasy. It's like you know it'd be really cool. Oh, the fireman had a calendar, so you find the best looking fireman in any major city and you make a calendar at him. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of men believe uh, women who are hairdressers are the hottest. I think that's a thing among men. That's a little. Sorry, I, I I have an opinion on a lot of things. That's not actually the same thing. That's mostly because. When they're with a hairdresser, they're being pampered in a way that they don't get at oh, home. Oh, true. And they're smelling her perfume. Might be oh, yeah. I hair. hate to say it, but back <laughs> back when I had a lot more hair, uh, when I went to the hairdresser, I was like, yeah, do you need a shampoo? I could have had a shampoo done an hour earlier. I'm yes, still I need 12 shampoos, please. I need extra clean hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do that really slow. Uh-huh. I mean, it's, yeah, she, you know, she's, she's, how many people, I mean, very few people get like a head massage like that. And that's really what you're getting. Right. Right. And yeah, the perfume sinks in and, and it's like, oh, well, I think people in general, both men and women Are um, aren't, um, the, the, the human touch, it's something right. that we long for. And right. some people really would only get it from there. From their hairdresser. Some people are alone in that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, absolutely. They're so, performing yeah, you're, a service you're, as well as, you know, doing the haircut. Your your point, though, is very true, which is, I mean, they'd feel that same way uh, if men got more massages, mm. really. Mm. And not, you know, the happy ending <laughs> ones. I have no idea what you're talking about. Of course not. <laughs> uh, hello to Goddess Witch Bella. And let's see, I'm going to scroll up here. Elspeth Awake, hello. Thanks for being here. Uh, Aspie Man is here. And um, Aspie Man, and I'm scrolling up here. Hey, Lenny from Canada says we look very militant tonight. We are very militant tonight. Well, not militant. Well, I mean, flat earth force. Right, 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 right. Doesn't militant mean you're very, like, angry and it's no, my way or the no, highway? No, just very... We're military mil we're, Yeah, military S. <laughs> wow. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be saying that in... in <laughs> information probably not we're very um, military s <laughs> don't chocolate, ask don't tell chocolate sayan is here too and james neal and jcam 72 
And Bob of Globusters, who's asking if he could get cast as a munchkin in a Hollywood production. I don't know, maybe. If they use like a that special tra- technique you spoke of earlier where they turn normal-sized people into small people. Bob is a munchkin. You know, by the way, so. I completely forgot about the munchkin side of it. Munchkin is, of course, a fictional name, much like Hobbit and well, right. Lord of the Rings. But yeah, definitely like Hobbit, which was from... We Wizard just mentioned Oz. it, Wizard of Oz earlier. Wizard yes. of Oz. Yes. And then, heck, you want to go that far? I'll, I'll out trivia you guys. What's another famous group that had a whole different name to them? Mm, gosh, I don't know. Oompa Loompa Doopa Dee Doo. I got another. Yeah, the Oompa Loompas. They but what were, were they? they were little. They were little people too, but they had oh. a fictional name. Oh, that's they were painted. Right. They had orange skin. Yes, indeed. And they were Oompa Loompas. Had Not the Johnny Depp version. We're talking the the original the Gene Wilder version. Gene Wilder. I have both of those DVDs actually. Of course, of course the the Gene Wilder one I prefer. I saw it with my dad when I was a little girl. I mean, I don't mind the Tim Burton version. I mean, no, I like it. Version. It's very artistic. And Lord Tim Burton can write a catchy mm-hmm. jingle. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, but it, it's it's tough to top that. I mean, it yeah. is such a. Most of the time, original films are best left alone. You know, but Most they don't. The time, because there's no more they good ideas left on Earth, as you've there's pointed out. There's nothing left. <laughs> you gotta, yeah. I mean, ninety something percent. It is not a made up stat, and that is as because there is so much, as you know, there is so much media out there that their only hope of jarring the 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 person into going to the movies is tying back to something from their childhood. Whether it be the Flintstones, the Brady Bunch, Mission Impossible, take your pick. There's so I, all of them. All of them, everything, everything. Diva Dante is here in DB who is saying, I need to get me a lab coat. <laughs> Hello, Paul. You do Holly. need to get yeah. a lab coat. We all should have a lab coat and just keep it in the glove compartment of our car. And then when you get in a certain situation where you need one, pop that baby on and you're there an you instant go. authority. Yeah, yeah. I will be wearing this from time to time. I, now, there's a couple different versions. I've got the straight lab coat that I think you got. Mm-hmm. Of course, yours is... Pss- special customized surprising no one but i thought Uh, you weren't telling anybody we have lab coats that we're gonna wear but you just did well i didn't we didn't say when (laughs) okay doesn't matter Uh, no we're talking it's okay we can talk lab coats no but there's a lab coat that i really like the old school 30s mad scientist lab. yeah the mad scientist type the the man yeah the mandarin cut oh i love those things i think those i think those are really snazzy uh, what and else is happening in here? Snazzy. Yeah, I like it. Hello to Pale Queens. Thank you for being here. And I already mentioned a couple of people. But anyway, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. I was trying to go as far up as I could go to see what was going on. Um, what else? Uh, Jose J.G. Gonzalez is here. Hey, ZL1 Camaro is here. Boy, a Camaro was the hottest car. Um, Firebird it's- Camaro when I was in high school. Actually, the Firebird was the Firebird. Uh, oh, sorry. But there's, the there's, fire, okay. it's made, made by a different company. Confused. So you had Chevy Camaro and then Chevy Camaro and Firebird. Yeah, Firebirds Pontiac. were the hottest car. Yeah, Pontiac Firebird with that giant bird on the front with that hood I scoop. So ugly. I thought and it was a 6.6 liter engine. It was what? You didn't like the giant Firebird on? You thought I don't it was a little know. too, it's too gaudy. It was I know. Gaudy. It wasn't my thing. But so yeah, I got the cars confused. Sorry, I'm just not a car. But the, so what? But the old Camaros, I mean, they're like the 60s Camaros and then the 70s and then the 80s. But that was oh, 70s. Yeah. yeah for 70s Camaro. The yeah. 70s uh, Firebird. Yeah. yeah. Isn't the Firebird a Trans Am? Yes. Okay, that's what was the hot car in my high school. In, when oh. I lived in Florida, and this was in the 70s. So. Oh, yeah. Well, of course it would be because who drove a famous Firebird or fi- famous Trans Am? Give me a clue because I don't know. Uh, good-looking guy, mustache, 70s, cowboy hat, Sally Fields co-star. If I could make it any I'm easier. <laughs> Well, sorry. Awesome. Really? That is great. That is the second. That is awesome. Oh, no, sorry. No, no, no. It's, Sally it's, Fields co star. Oh, my God. You mean the ghost and Mrs. Muir? No. Not, not that, no. Oh, stop. Sally. Oh my God! That reminds me of that. I'm sorry. I've got. I've got it. George this Clooney. reminds me of when Cheech from Cheech and Chong did that. Did that song uh, called "Born"? Uh, I was born in East LA, mm. and he's making the the conversation between he and the cop. And the cop goes, "All right, who's the president of the United States?" And Cheech goes, "Oh, that's easy. It's that guy from Death Valley days, uh, John Wayne." 
<laughs> well, everybody in it the chat to... has, has told me uh, we've got uh, Flat Earth Vegan saying Smoking the Bandit. Or Chad yeah, is yeah, it's Smoking Knight the Rider. Bandit. I mean, so no, no, Burt no, Reynolds, Smokey in the Bed at Burt Reynolds, uh, yeah. and yeah, and that was the car, that black Trans Am that he drove to freaking death, and uh, yeah, of course it would have been hot because that was the late seventies. That was a huge thing. That was one of the few good things that came out of the seventies. Was the whole Smokey in the Bandit series and Burt Reynolds. Never was a fan, but okay. Never got okay. a Burt Reynolds. No, no, no. I fact, I kind of, I had this roommate. Early on, I was working for a radio station and she li she and I lived together. I didn't really know her. I think I, we became roommates due to a classified ad. It was my second apartment living on my own. Um, anyway, she got Playgirl magazine. And I looked at it oh, a few times he, and he I thought it was really gross. I mean, it's not that I don't find men beautiful and blah, 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 but just play, Playgirl. I just, just, I just was, ugh. but anyway, he was in Playgirl magazine. With a cigar, laying on like a fur rug. Yeah, yeah, he, that would have been him because Playgirl was was hot in the seventies. And of course, my my criticism of Playgirl magazine was similar to many of the other women, and I didn't really realize it till fairly recently, which was what's missing from Playgirl magazine. Women. No, the, <laughs> the guys weren't aroused. Oh, oh, well, ever, that would have been ever. So, That's true. so it's like why why not? It's like a double standard. It's like career, seriously, the full Monty. You're not gonna. Why not? What, what do you get to lose at this point? And I never thought about that, yeah. but it was. It, it just made me feel like Nora. No one's flower says Playgirl. Yuck. That's how I felt. Yeah. Another little bit about the roommate. I don't know her anymore. We <laughs> split after being roommates about maybe a year, and then we never saw each other again. I'm not speaking poorly about her, but she had a subscription to Playgirl magazine. And the other thing I remember about her is that every single night she'd make an entire box of Kraft macaroni and cheese and eat it. And she loved Garfield. That was my roommate for a year in life. Did you really? Did she have one of those cat posters that says, hang in there? Yes. She did, didn't she? Yes. Yeah. yeah and Playgirl know. Magazine and Craft Macaroni. That's, that's kind of a weird little combo, though. It was, oh, Playgirl and she also rode a Harley. I forgot about that. She drove a Harley. It was the weirdest roommate that could ever, ever be my roommate. That's just so, I mean, how did it happen? It would never happen again in the history weird. of mankind. That's weird. Anyway, Burt Reynolds, the car. I totally get it. Uh, yeah, and it was a car. No, I was a huge. Okay, I, I, well, I'll tell you off air why I'd never buy. I was going to buy a Trans Am. I was. Really? I was totally. I was a, I'm a few years younger, but I was totally going to get that car. And I was going to get a silver one, not a black one. And I changed my mind for a very specific reason. Will you tell us? Yeah, I'm not going to tell. I can't tell everybody, but okay. I'll tell you. I'll tell you off. All right. Air. Good. We need some. But I was going to get one of those cars. And then I ended up chat. buying a whole bunch of Cadillacs because I just love giant sedans. Ah, I, my dad had a red Cadillac Eldorado with a white leather interior and a white top at one point. Wow. Yeah, my dad that's, was a, that's a flashy car. <laughs> and his personalized license plate said his radio station, WKMI, in the back. And then he got a Corvette, a white one, with a white leather interior <laughs> as well. My dad had flashy taste in vehicles. Wow, my mom had a very sedate Mercedes, and that's pretty much it. Um, speaking of cars, Michael Wake the Sheeple said, I had a yellow 74 Firebird with a red bird on it. Uh, he, a 69 Nova SS, which was his favorite, and it could do 6.8 in the quarter mile. He says he welded two sets of traction bars to keep the front tires on the ground. And people are into their cars. Yes, they are. Oh, heck, don't get me started on that. How many, every kid in my school, once they hit 15 years old, even before they could drive, had an auto trader sitting in their locker, an auto trader magazine. You oh, ever see I those? remember auto trader. And then there was the blue book was another thing to Kelly look at. Kelly blue book. Oh, yeah. yeah. But the auto trader was way more fun because it had all these pictures and, and all the descriptions and guys are just fawn over it at all times, knowing most, they were never going to buy anything in there. Although some guys did. Yeah. There was one. Cars, as, as as a high school girl, a boy with a car was like what you wanted to have, the nicer the car. Yeah. Yeah. And you know who I was? I was the guy who skipped a grade and was young. And so I didn't even take driver's ed until I was 16. Or no, I didn't take driver's ed until my senior year. Right? Oh, wow. So I was, I know. So like, yeah, my, my first semester, my senior year, I'm taking driver's ed. Literally, I'm I'm bumming rides people off people for the first three years, you know, freshman, sophomore, and junior, and then. Yeah. So you weren't raking in the chicks in high school. No, but you're making up for it now in flat earth. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm just swimming in them. 
flat earth oh, chicks so hot. I'll, although i will say that here, here's the fun thing no it, it has changed though because remember why you know all the the people that i've been um spending time with they've been flat earth so that's been kind of fun i haven't had i haven't had the pain of dealing with i wasn't dating somebody then became a flat earther and then had to go through all that oh yeah so a couple of people are saying they have bicycles because they live in the city and they take the subway. Totally valid. I had a friend who lived in New York and, well, she lived in Houston before she moved to New York. She had to get rid of her car because in order to pay for parking, it would have been as much per month in the area she lived in as kind of close to her rent. And she would have to walk really far to get to her car. Oh, yeah. How, what good is that? I mean, especially if it's snowing or raining or something. So she just yeah. got rid of her car. Um yeah. But if you live in New York and you're a native New Yorker and you're good with the subway, bike, and walking, it can be awesome. Because everything, well, everything's so condensed there. Compared. If you live in an area where it's condensed, but if you're living in a certain area outside um, and you have to, to you know, t take a take a ride to Manhattan um, on the subway, uh, you know, you may have you may live in a neighborhood that doesn't have all the things that you want out of life, and then right. what are you going to do? Right. Let's see what else is happening. Um, there's so many funny conversations going on. In yeah, the we, we opened up a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, 84 so. Pontiac Parisian station wagon, fake Ooh, wood and all. That's, that's that. dead sexy. Yeah. Uh, my dad and mom had a station wagon, a wood station wagon, but we only used that for, I don't know what we used it for. Like going you had a real Woody? Yeah, yeah. Going to the um, drive-in movie theater. That's how I saw Planet of the Apes. Blankets <sighs> in the back seat yep. of the Woody with a popcorn, and we were in our pajamas, and we got to play in that little playground that was like in front of the drive-in movie theater, but it was near the screen before they started showing the film. Those who aren't aware of drive-in movie theaters are probably lost at what we're talking Wait, you about. You saw Planet of the Apes in a drive-in? I think it was Planet of the Apes. I saw the... Yes, I did. Not the original. Best? It might have been the original. Wow, you would have been young. Oh, I was young. I don't yeah, remember. I was about to say, either. that's young. I saw Star Wars in the drive-in with my parents' Country Squire. Oh, Country Squire. Station, station wagon, yeah. That's they were cool. cool. They had their they had their purpose. I mean, you fold down the seat. You got a giant back seat. You can use it to transport things. It's not like trucks. Um, we've got yeah, Lenny from Canada saying he has a truck. We haven't spoke of trucks, but it's... If you want to have all the cars you need for life, if you're into having cars, you kind of would like to have a convertible and you'd like to have an SUV and you'd like right. to have a truck. And, you know, I mean, you need to have lots of money to have all that. And then the real famous people who have lots and lots of vehicles. They don't drive. They don't drive them. So. No. Well, they can't. Money's uh, wasted on the wealthy, I think. <laughs> no. What happens is, well, depending on the type of, of wealth that you have and, and the type of personality, if you're like a, in the public eye, you can't really go out by yourself. You're you're kind of pinned in. You you either send out for stuff, or when you go out, you're going out with other people, or you have a driver, or whatever. Um, it's again that that stupid. Well, I shouldn't say stupid. It's actually very insightful. The Joe Walsh song "Life's Been Good," mm. where he said, uh, "You know, um, my Maserati does 185. I lost my license. Now I don't drive. Uh, got a limo right in the back. I locked the doors in case I'm attacked." That's but, a great series of lines about fame. Yeah, yeah, you, it's it's strange. You know, you feel for it. Everyone wants that that life, but when you get it, it you're it's it's you're not you're not on the outside looking in. You're now on the inside looking out, and everything changes. Mm. So, um, somebody's caught on. Stan Wilder joining the chat, saying, "See, you guys are wearing the anti space farce uniform." Yes, indeed, we space are space farce. Yeah, <laughs> space farce. <laughs> um, yeah. DB says today's cars are ugly. Wish they'd make those 50s, 60s bodies with today's technology. Why don't they? Because uh, the metals oh, are so they, they tried with a few models. I mean, the Camaro, they tried to go retro. The Vet, kind of tough to do. They did uh, the new Beetle, which I know is not a 50s or 60s car. Oh, yeah, yeah. But they went back. That, that, yeah, again, that's that's hearkening back to the old style of the Volkswagen Beetle. Sure, sure. Um, but they can't do it with everything. There's what just, was your first car? Oh God, you don't want to know my first cars. I mean, sure. my our family had horrible. All our, our cars were mechanically outstanding, and they were ugly as sin. Nothing wrong with that. The wrong. colors are terrible. The body styles are terrible. My first car was a 1974 Dodge Dart, pine green with pine green vinyl interior. Did you tell friends that you're going darting today when you went out? No, it was Did nothing. It? It, it, it was a it was a it was a slant six engine gutless but it was again that's it is one piece of advice if you're having kids it's the one piece of advice i actually 
uh, really think it's universal, and that is get your kid a car. Buy them. Buy your kid a car. Don't don't make him buy it himself, but make sure it's uh, fun. It's it's mechanically sound, but you don't care if it gets a dent in it because you're yeah. not going to fix it. Let them run it into things. All right, just ran over a mailbox. Yeah, buff that out. You get them. Get them something that's you know big and heavy and sturdy, and just let them. You know, because they do. They back into stuff. Oh yeah, I stuff. I did a lot of that sort of thing. Um, I had two cars. One was the car that my parents got for me, um, but it was my mom's. It was a car my mom used in the winter in Michigan, and they called it a beater, meaning when it was really snowy and you'd be sliding all over, she wouldn't drive her Mercedes. She drived a Datsun B210 in pumpkin orange. It was like the car no one wanted to drive, even her. But later on, she gave it to me. It was sporty. Yeah, kind of, but it was pumpkin orange. Wait, it's orange not exactly. Here. Wait, a minute, it's not exactly a snow car. Well, no, but that's what I got to drive in the snow. But the car that <laughs> I bought myself, and I didn't even know how to drive a stick shift. My dad had to go with me after I found it in the newspaper and drove drive it, and then I learned how to drive it. it was a 1979 Triumph Spitfire, British Racing Green, and that was my prize. I love that car. So that was my first car um and i you can't drive that in the winter i mean you're like an, two inches off the ground pretty much that's a convertible right yes it was convertible yeah yeah i love that car yeah, so that was not cool yeah. right no pe cool people the alternative kids had triumphs really i, I knew guys that had tr7s tr3s yep, yep. uh tr3s were tiny i couldn't even yeah they were they were uh, somebody at my school had a tr3 but yeah i was really happy to have that car and nobody else in my school had it and it was pretty cool wow. um Irk child says the general lee was pumpkin pumpkin orange we, I, kind of kind of wasn't it, it more was, like masonic orange <laughs> it was i don't know if it was pumpkin orange it was yeah the general lee was yeah there's a remake for you um, Flat Earth Vegans say the first car was an 82 Firebird. Speaking of Firebirds, yeah. um, someone else says a ZL1 Camaro, <laughs> perfect name for being in this chat, says, right now I own a 1996 Impala SS, the ZL1, which you all know, a 1983 Silverado and a 1963 SS Impala Factory 409. Wow, 63 is the year I was born. Crazy. It's probably in better shape than uh, I am. That's a car guy, <laughs> by, by the way. That is anybody, anybody that uses the word factory when driving also, when describing their car. Look at his YouTube channel name, ZL1 Camaro. That's a car guy. Oh yeah, it's a car guy. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Lanny from Canada says 33 orange. Yep. Um, Glenn Parent says a 57 Mercury Road Cruiser, and uh, Ridgeview says his first was a 1966 Chevy 286 V with two speed auto. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't like fun the thoughts of all the cars that we've had in our past and that we still manage to not kill other people or ourselves. <laughs> See, I don't know if I had to get a new car today, what I get. I love my 300 and it's, it's got to, you know, it's not, it doesn't have a lot of you miles need like on a it. like a giant Hummer. <laughs> no. <laughs> giant no, Humvee military not, style black. I, no, I don't. Okay. One, I'll never drive a black car. I know I had a, uh, several black cars. My car's black, black. Yeah. They uh, get really like dirty. Black shows dust. Like, yes, indeed. oh my God. One, one little, even a light breeze. And all of a sudden you're like, what the heck? Just wash the car. Look at it. <laughs> it looks yeah. Like now, which is one of the reasons I got white. White shows dirt. But again, if you're in a place where there's dust and you don't want to worry, white is the way to go. Anyway, all right. We better we're, get we're off, off cars because we're off again, we're off into the weeds. But that's right. what the show is all about. For those who this offends, sorry. The secret show is a fun show. We talk about many things, including flat earth. And sometimes we just, you know, Talk about whatever the chat wants to talk about. Um, Arwen is saying it's a full moon, guys. Um, right. we, we should probably reiterate the, if anyone wants to, because this is actually more important than anything else, the, the, t the test. If anyone wants to join in the fun with all the flat earthers that are going to be down at the salt and sea. FREE -E group, Flat Reality Earth Explorers. Right. We did that in our first, this is a two-part show, by the way. So if you're just watching this, this is part B. Part A is on the channel but you'll, yeah, you'll have I'll, the similar put, thumbnail i will put these two together on unfortunately, my version unfortunately an issue caused me to have to start the hangout again so yeah but that one's got everything a... having to do with the salton sea flat earth demonstration and the right. free -E group flat earth excuse me flat reality earth explorers and anyway so yeah yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I hate having a show divided like that because it gets less views and blah blah blah. And people, people just hey, watch part one. It. And... Could have been worse. 
Yeah, that's true. A lot of things could have been worse, you know. So, and we do want to thank Wendell Walton um, and Uber Josh and Nathan Gonzalez who were on with us. Um, and Sydney actually, was actually, on Wendell too. wasn't before. We well, he was on for a few seconds. That counts. <laughs> His frozen face. <laughs> yeah. uh, anything else? That was, we need that was to when talk he about? crashed. By the way, um, Stephen Chess has a channel and he's focusing on flat Earth weather. And he's in the chat saying, "Going out to the desert tomorrow. What should I film?" So he's going out. To the Salton Sea. He was out there when we were out there earlier uh, this month. What should Stephen film? Uh, anything. As much as you can get. Everything. Yeah. I, I mean, somebody should probably show uh, the time lapse that was done. And I think they're already doing it. That the, was and compared to the Skunk Bay time lapse, which is when the heat gets up. There's a reason why you don't shoot this sucker in the middle of the day. The you'll see atmospheric effects that make it look like the tides are going up and down with these massive swells, and it's not the case. Well, let's see. I think that's it. I'm looking in the chat and seeing if there's anybody new. Oh, the astral thief uh, just came in to make a perfect comment. He should film the truth. Hey, that's good. Winner, so, winner. I love the internet. Vegan chicken dinner. <laughs> Vegan chicken. Well, I dinner? mentioned veganism one time every show and there it is. All right. <laughs> All right, to everyone who watched uh, part A and now is here in the live chat in part B, I want to uh, thank you for being here. I do want to let you know the next show that I'm doing is Tuesday, and it's with Joey Rocha from Hawaii. We're going to talk about all sorts of things, how he healed himself from cancer. Yes, you heard right. And about his view on volcanoes not exactly being real. But he's not saying that there's no such thing as volcanoes. But well, there's some trickery with volcano imagery that we get to see when we look at the major mainstream media. So Joey Rocha will be my guest on Tuesday on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. And then we'll be back again on Wednesday where we might be wearing another interesting look. But I think we should call this. it the Credibility Show. The Credibility Show. That's yeah. what we're doing. Join right. us for that next Wednesday. Um, that's it for the show. That's it. Thank you for being here. And until we meet again, chat, those watching it at a later date, Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent, bid you a fond adieu or a fondue and keep it flat. Flat Earth 4.